What a glorious day for football. Coach's heart is beating faster than a rabbit caught in the crosshairs. Good reason, too. You see, his team is number one in the country, and there's a ton of pressure bearing down on those shoulders. He knows that an errant fumble, bad snap, maybe a missed assignment, and bam! A university just outside Dallas, the mean green machine of North Texas, takes it to the Sooners, and all heck breaks loose. Yep, it could happen. After all, North Texas won last year's New Orleans Bowl. But to the OU faithful, hitch up that Sooner schooner, boys. We're riding this to the national championship. Yes! The number one Oklahoma Sooners and the mean green of North Texas are set to take off the gloves. College Football Saturday kicks off now on Fox Sports Net. to Kiyosara College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. We're at the University of Oklahoma as the Sooners, the number one ranked team in the nation in preseason, open up the slate against the Mean Green from North Texas with a full house on hand once again here at the University of Oklahoma. Hi everyone, I'm Bill Land along with Gary Reasons, an old linebacker, and we'll get to the reason for that in just a moment. These two teams both picked to win their respective leagues again this year, Gary, and the reason for it is the defense, and they both have great linebackers. We start with the visitors from Denton, Texas, and University of North Texas, and they've got a couple of guys that love to hit. Well, they have eight returning starters in their defense, their linebackers, and their defense are led by Cody Spencer and Taylor Casey. These two guys are physical, they're fast, they're aggressive. Hey, they're all conference picks, and they come back and they lead that team against a pretty potent Oklahoma offense. Yeah, that Oklahoma offense may take a while to hit its beat, but the defense is expected to carry this team long and hard throughout the season. And again, you go to that linebacker slot, Lance Mitchell, Teddy Lehman, a couple of award winners who know how to get it done. No doubt about it. These two guys are excellent football players. Lance Mitchell, the newcomer of the year in the Big 12 a year ago. Teddy Lehman, I tell you, this young man may be the best linebacker in all of college football. I think he's that good, Bill. These two guys lead that potent defense. They've got nine returning starters. Oklahoma's defense is really one of the best. Welcome back to Owen Field. We are in Norman, Oklahoma for the opening game of the season. It is a night to honor all Americans here. All Americans walking by me even as we speak. Terry Crouch and Tony Casillas going by. their 70s All-Americans. It's also retro night here at Owen Field. You'll notice that the players are wearing uniforms, replica uniforms from circa the 1950s when Bud Wilkinson prowled the sidelines. The athletic director here, Joe Castiglione, is wearing the exact uniform form that Bud Wilkinson wore. Fedora and all, you'll get a shot of Joe Castiglione later in the game. The hardest hit people are not the coaches who are wearing outfits like Barry Switzer wore in the 1970s. No, it's these cheerleaders who have replicas of the 1947 cheerleader sweaters. They say those will be the first injury reports I have as one of those cheerleaders goes down with heat exhaustion. We'll see about that. I throw it back upstairs now. Bill and Gary, take it away. Thanks, John. We look forward to having you with us throughout the season. And, yeah, you turn the clock back all you want, but look to the future with this Oklahoma football team as they're the ones that everyone in the prognosticators said are number one. And Oklahoma will get first crack at it offensively as North Texas will kick things off here tonight. As will do it with a kickoff. Taken at the two. And hit at the 23 yard line. And the Sooners will take control there. Sean Early making the tackle, and Jason White, the Oklahoma quarterback, comes on to lead the Sooners, the senior out of Tuttle, Oklahoma. Here's our Kiyosara starting lineup here for the Sooners, as Oklahoma, with White, his career completion percentage, 63%. You see, though, this is a fifth-year senior. He just hadn't been on the field enough. He has had a tremendous preseason. The offensive line, a battle between some veterans and some youngsters, very solid as well. And look for works 
to get the call at the starting tailback slot. They come out throwing, and it is complete to Clayton. Clayton is tackled just shy of the 30-yard line for Oklahoma as Cody Spencer is there to cover on the play. A little bit of the spread offense already, Bill, for Clayton getting into the game. Take a look at the defense here for the Mean Green. And a lot of returning all-conference performers. Harrison Kennedy is the best of the bunch, an All-American candidate up front, along with Cardwell and Owasso. The linebackers, as we told you, studs, Casey, Spencer, and Hurd. And the secondary does a great job of supporting as well. Buckles and Priestley are all-star players there. It is second and five, the ball at the 29-yard line. And the handoff to Works. He's got the first down and more as Works is out to the 38-plus. Well, they're going to do well offensively. They've got to take care of one man in the middle, and that's Brandon Kennedy, the nose tackle for the Mean Green. Hey, he's an all-conference performer. He's the guy that gets things going. Take a look here. they got him single blocked right there, and if you can do that with one player on Brandon Kennedy, Ronaldo Works and company are going to be able to get yardage between the tackles, and that's a nice opening running play for the Sooners. <laughs> Oklahoma on first to 10 and works pulling his way across the 45 yard line out to near the 47 yard line a six foot one senior out of Tulsa Booker T Washington the most consistent player through the summer practices to edge Kiwan Jones for the starting role here's the Sooners game plan well they need to make it work that offensive line may be the best they've had here get the running game going defense they've got to be dominant they should they know they can do that they've got speed out there and they've got to establish the pitch and catch game with Jason White and his receivers a few changes there in the receivers this year but Jason White untested now got a couple of plays under his belt he's probably feeling okay second down and one and White hands it off again and works comes to the left side, gets to the 49-yard line, and appears to have the first down for Oklahoma. Works last year, 148 yards rushing, 4.6 per carry, a couple of touchdowns. Well, he got the starting nod over Kiwan Jones. Kiwan Jones came in yet last year as a freshman, did a nice job. He'll get into the ball game as well, but Ronaldo Works, the senior. Bill, we saw his first game as a freshman here when he got his first touchdown. Kind of been a bumpy road for him so far over his career, but he's expected to carry the load this season for Oklahoma. First and 10 at the 49 of the Sooners as out of the shotgun this time as Jason White scrambles to miss one. Dumps it across to Clayton, the 45, and falls forward as Clayton just shy of another first down on the receiving end. Mark is a junior out of Arlington, Texas from Sam Houston. So really take a look here Jason White the quarterback let's test his mobility he's had two knee injuries the past two seasons doesn't look it's bothering him there looks like he's got good mobility hey, he even takes a little shot there that could be a penalty but didn't get called good for Jason White to get a little contact looks like he's moving around pretty well Awasom is the one that knocked him down just to test it out there you know they're going to come after him as Clayton on the reception sets up a second and one at the 42 out of the shotgun the fake to works the dump over the middle complete at the 30 and another first down for the Sooners. The receiver this time, Travis Wilson, a sophomore from Carrollton, Texas. Well, when you run the ball inside very well, which the Sooners have done a couple of plays, you're going to have to take care of the play fake. Look here, you got the guard pull, the fake inside. Right here, you take see the crosser coming across behind the linebackers, and Wilson makes a nice grab. Jason White looks pretty sharp, Bill. White. Last year, 20 of 34 in his limited play for 181 yards, two interceptions, one touchdown as he had that freak injury that set him out for the year in the Alabama game. Works going left, 25, 20, and Works knocked out of bounds inside the 19-yard line. Ronaldo Works. Good block that time on the outside. James Moses, the tight end, won the corner out there on the block, and Ronaldo works as a good job getting around. You know, a year ago, Bill, they brought in a new run coordinator, and that would be Kevin Wilson. Look what they've done here last season. 190 yards rushing per game and passing 202. Over the season, they had a balance, real balance of that rushing and passing game. They won't establish that again. They were better by 71 yards per game rushing the ball last year. That's a pretty phenomenal feat. Led them to a Big 12 title and then a win in the Rose Bowl over Washington State. Works. Keeps his balance, goes forward, and really fought to get down to the 17 and a half yard line. I had a chance to visit with Works the other day, Gary, and I said, anything you learn from sitting behind an all-star like Quentin Griffin, that he goes, one of the things was to never give up and to keep your balance, and that looked a little like Quentin. 
Yeah, that's exactly what happened there. Good, good get, play by the defense getting into the backfield, but he bounced off the initial tackle and got back, made a couple yards. Now we're going to have Kiwan Jones come in on a third and short situation. He was in there in their jumbo package a year ago, Bill, and got a lot of touchdowns, 14 touchdowns as a, as a freshman. Yeah, a freshman record here at Oklahoma. Now the rain comes here on the opening possession, third and two at the 18. Jones hit hard. And a loss on the play, nailed at the 20. Craig Jones from Sinton, Texas, an all-conference first-teamer in the Sun Belt last year. This UNT club went eight and five, six and zero oh in its run through the Sun Belt, and then capped it off with the victory in the New Orleans Bowl against Cincinnati, 24-19. Well, this defense is really pretty stingy. They've got excellent talent across the board. Darrell has done a good job in recruiting, getting players in there. I think that's a real confidence builder to stop the Sooners. They were marching the ball and making them try a field goal. Trey DiCarlo will come on for the field goal attempt, and it is up, and it is good. So the Sooners connect on a 37-yard field goal, and Oklahoma takes the lead, 3-0. You're watching it on Fox Sports Net. Bill and Gary Reasons, John Radigan with you as the showers come down here in Norman and the Sooners, after the successful drive and the 37-yard field goal, will kick it off now as Oklahoma up 3-0 here in the opening quarter. Trey DiCarlo, a sophomore from Carrollton, Texas, Creekview High School, the suburbs of Dallas, hit the field goal from 37, and he will kick it to UNT. Jamel Branch is their best return man. And they stay away from Branch. The reverse brings it back to the 20, 25, and to the 30-yard line, and then finally hit hard about the 32-yard line as North Texas with Nolton carrying the football, and UNT will get pretty decent field position. Good setup here by the returner here, running to his right, and Markeith Nolton going to come around. He's the punt returner as well on this football team, so Markeith Nolton knows what to do with the football when he has it in his hands. It's kind of a gutsy call by Daryl Dickey. First kickoff return, run the reverse, but I think he did what he wanted. Got good field position at the 32-yard line. Nissan scoring drive. Well, let's take a look at the drive as 10 plays and 56 yards. Works with 27 yards rushing. DiCarlo capped it off. First at 10 for UNT at its 32. And Drew Smith, the quarterback, rolls out. And it is incomplete. Hitting hard in the secondary, Derek Strait. Let's take a look at the North Texas starters brought to you by Kiyosara as UNT coming off an 8-5 and five campaign. Scott Hall will see some time tonight. Drew Smith getting the start at quarterback, though. Hall is a guy who got hurt last year early but did play the entire season before. The offensive line, May, Hobbs, Brewster, Zaniga, and Chambers, and wide receivers and backs keep an eye on Jamel Branch. The second team all-conference pick, Gardner's the tight end. They hope can get it done for him this year. Second and 10 at the 32. And nothing doing with a flag being thrown here. Number 43, Cobbs, the ball carrier. Cobbs, the ball carrier, and Patrick Cobbs, big day for him. He's from number Tecumseh, nine, Oklahoma, nine. not far from that here in Norman. Cody, Last eight. year ran for 761 three, yards and eight touchdowns and replaces Galbraith, their workhorse, who ran for over 2,400 yards the past two seasons. Wait and see the call here. Illegal violation on the offense. Well, that's one thing that Ramon Flanagan, the offense pointer for the for North Texas, told us they were going to do is run some different formations at this big defense. Take a look at the Oklahoma defense that last year allowed just 15 points per game, six best in the country. Jackson Harris, an All-American performer, along with Cody and a veteran crew up front. The linebackers, we told you about Mitchell and Lehman. Well, Pasha Jackson is also a stud, a senior out of Hayward, California. And the secondary with Perkins. Nicholson is a newcomer. And Poole, straight as a veteran that made the big hit on the first play. And the rain comes down even harder, and the crowd just roars louder. Third down and nine. The ball on the 33 of UNT. Smith. Looking for room, 
now trying to scatter to the near side, stumbles forward. Oklahoma just did not let him out of there. And he gets to near the 37-yard line. Lance Mitchell finally makes the tackle. Looks like he's going to have somewhere to scramble, too. But I tell you, that defense reacts very well. Lance Mitchell comes downhill to play action fake. Get into a space early, but look, he looks like he may be able to run to his left, but no, he turns back because he runs into a guy and Lance Mitchell there to slow him down and turn him back inside. It's a good first series here by the Oklahoma defense and forces a punt. So Drew Smith certainly didn't want to turn it over here. As UNT will kick it away on fourth and five from the 37. Cadlebar. And it goes out of bounds near the 26-yard line. 37-yard punt. A timeout is called. 3-0 Oklahoma on Fox Sports Net. Head coach Daryl Dickey, the Sun Belt Coach of the Year, as he has done a great job in turning that UNT program around and against a heck of a schedule every year. And on the other side is Bob Stoops starting his fifth year, 43-9 and nine for Coach Stoops last year at 12-2. and two. Winners of the Rose Bowl in the Big 12 and, of course, won a national title with a 13-0 run a couple of years ago, beating Florida State down in the Orange Bowl. And this one, the team that is picked to try to go from start to finish, wire to wire, is number one, and a flag is thrown on the first down play as Jason White back out for his second series. Yeah, a lot of question marks about Jason White and how well he was going to come back this season, Bill. The last two years, unfortunate for him, he had injuries two years ago against Nebraska runs. No contact here, but tears an ACL on his left knee, and then back the next year, tears an ACL on the right knee. Again, no contact. So he really has not had any football contact since that Nebraska game back in 2001. So pretty good test for him coming back. He's got the knee brace on the right knee. Probably thinks he still needs a little help there. This is kind of a strange situation to be out there in with the rain coming down and wonderful the footing is going to be difficult for him and the other ball carriers out there. But Jason White, you know, he's a, he's a heady guy. He's a smart guy. He's the one that actually won the starting foot, the quarterback job the last three years. And he's out there again leading the Sooners. Personal foul is the call against Oklahoma. So it backs his Sooner offense up inside the 15. Yeah, White, a guy that just couple of games last year, seven games and three starts the first year of the knee injury, and then two games in 0-0. Second and 21 now for Oklahoma. White dumps it off, works, 20, slips, fumble the football. They may call him down. The official is standing at the 24-yard line. Yeah, the line judge is right there taking the, got his foot down, and Ronaldo works getting up slow. He, uh, Probably got popped there at the end of that pile. He's down at the 24-yard line. Take a look at Jason White, his footwork here, and the pressure that the, the defense puts on him. He takes a shot, goes down. First contact low for Jason White. Looks like he weathered that storm pretty well. Here, take a look at the end of the play, and Ronaldo works. Going to make somebody miss here and cut outside. Oh, right there, bad little break and the fumble. He grabs his lower body there. So he was hit low on that outside of his right leg, and... Not sure really where they're attending to him at, but Ronaldo works the training staff around him. 93 Pruitt was the man that put the pressure on White as he unloaded the ball, and then Jonas Buckles is the one that made the tackle as everyone centered around Works. Obviously, the concern coming in was not Works, was Jason White. They will hope to get him through a few games, but Works, let's take another look here. I'll take a look at that right knee right there. He lost all balance there, and then the hit right on the outside of the knee. That Spencer hitting him, and ball comes loose it was ruled down on the 24 yard line as you said Bill as they help Ronaldo off that's a big loss here for this football team if he's not able to come back Kiwan Jones would certainly come in we've already seen a little bit of him tonight and Jones we mentioned the 14 touchdowns last year and then Dante Hickson 5'10 194 pound sophomore from McKinney Texas would be the next in line there Third and, 12. third and 12 the ball at the 24 Sooners fortunate no turnover ruled there out of the shotgun is white again and it is incomplete out of bounds so the Sooners will have to punt it away on a fourth and 12 a little zone coverage by the Eagles that time on defense 
Two deep zone coverage, and he gets behind the outside corner. Jason White trying to slip it in there in that void between the safety and the and the cornerback, and just leads him a little bit too far out of bounds. Branch is back for UNT as Oklahoma will kick it away with Blake Ferguson. He stands right on his own 10-yard line. Jamel Branch, the return man for North Texas. He is 5'7", 170, a junior out of Katy, Texas in the Houston area. Ferguson, a nice punt, and Branch is hammered at the 25-yard line after a 46-yard kick. No oh, halo wow. rule this year, Bill, so that is out. So that is a good play by the kick coverage team. Good job of going down. Branch does a nice job of catching the football, catching it in traffic. They want the ball in his hands because they know he's a big-time player with the ball. He can make a play, but that was excellent coverage by the Sooners. Straight and Poteet. You're looking at Poteet. Straight is two, Poteet 21, watch. Catch the ball, boom, right there. Knocks the ball loose, and then the Sooners right on top of it. Get the football on the cause, fumble. And the Sooners are knocking again. Yeah, straight with the hit, Poteet with the recovery, and Oklahoma. The kicking game and special teams. I was just about to ask you what effect the weather might have, Gary. I don't think the weather had anything there as far as the rain. Uh, the bench erupted because they thought that he was interfered with on the kick. Even though there is no halo rule, you do have to allow the punt returner an opportunity to catch the football. And Daryl Dickey probably very upset, probably thinking from his vantage point that his returner was not afforded an opportunity to make that catch. But from where we are with the slow motion cameras, it looks like it was a clean play by Oklahoma and good coverage. Well, and everyone must, must adjust to the rule change. And last year, I don't know anybody that liked that halo rule because it was almost encouraging teams to break the rule to risk the penalty. And now it's going back to the way it used to be, and the judgment simply is you must allow that returner a chance to catch the football. Well, the returner is in control. He can call for the fair catch and protect himself. Jamel Brandt chose to try to field the football and kind of backfired. First and 10 at the 12 for the Sooners up 3-0. Jones, big hole. Jones inside the five-yard line, and Jones rolling down to near the two. Kiwan Jones, a sophomore from Jinx, Oklahoma. Kevin Wilson, the run winner for the Sooner offense. Really liked his offensive line this year, line this year Bill West Sims, the left guard, and he got the guard coming around, pulling. Good job opening things up inside, and Kiwan Jones sets up his blocks well inside. Runs down inside the five-yard line. Owasso made the tackle from his end position for UNT. And Oklahoma with 7.17 to go in the first period, leading 3-0. Trying to tack on a six spot. First and goal from the two. White to Jones, and he is stuffed. Jones brought down on the play by Craig Jones, the cornerback spot, or the safety, I should say. Think about this defense, Bill, North Texas. They've got a lot of pride. They've got a lot of heart back there. They were the number one defense in the conference last year in the Sun Belt Conference. They were a top 10 defense, top 10 scoring defense. So they know how to play good, aggressive style of defense. One thing that did happen and change this year for the Green Green on defense, their defensive coordinator, Gary DeLoach, moved on to another job at LSU. And Kenny Evans elevated from the linebacker coaching position now as the defensive coordinator there. Not a lot of changes. They're going to keep the same things in, intact, and they just got to be physical here against the center. Second and goal from the four. Jones gets it back to near the two on a hard run. And he is brought down by Cody Spencer, linebacker. So you're on a great find, Texas, an all-conference first-teamer. Yeah, we talked about him in the open, one of the physical players in the middle. Take a look at Cody Spencer, 48, playing off the block, and good hit in the hole there, a good solid tackle. That's what you need to do as a linebacker, step up, get separation off of the lead block. And wrap up that ball carry. Good job, Cody Spencer. Well, last year, we saw North Texas open up the season against the University of Texas, and their defense was stout all night long. Pass complete. Touchdown, Oklahoma, and the Sooners get six. Rankins on the reception. Oklahoma, a 9-0 leader. Jawan Rankins, a sophomore from Windsor, North Carolina, with the first touchdown of 2003. 
Walter Priestley going to have coverage on the outside. Going to give up a little bit too much cushion. He pushes him back and comes back to the ball. Rankins does. Does a nice job finding and settling a spot for Jason White to throw to and an easy pitch and catch. Matt McCoy is holding for DiCarlo. DiCarlo last year, 58 of 62 in PATs. The left footer is up, and it is good. And after a field goal from DiCarlo, now the point after. White, the touchdown pass. And Oklahoma up 10, nothing. Sooners push off here on the outside. You got the outside receiver going to push back as Rankins. Watch him push off Priestley and see how he comes back to Jason White, able to make a play. The push off there. Priestley gets his up vertical, and Rankins does a nice job of coming back inside of the end zone. Pretty easy throw there that time for Jason White. Cobbs and Branch are back for UNT as DiCarlo kicks it off with the Sooners up 10 0. Branch, one deep out of the end zone. And Branch brings it out across the 20 to the 24-yard line where he is brought down by the Sooners. And as it's first to 10, UNT following the tackle by Poole. Let's take a look at our poll question tonight. Very simple. Who will win the Big 12 South? Log on to FoxSports.com and let us know. As Oklahoma's been picked to not only win the South, but the Big 12. Kansas State in the preseason is picked to be the North champion. Wildcats, of course, the win in their season opener over Cal last week, playing Troy State today. And conference opener already played today with Nebraska and Oklahoma State up in Lincoln. Hand off and Cobbs dancing for all he can get. Nice run by Patrick to get just across the 30-yard line. Picks up six, and how about the Mean Green game plan, Gary? Well, they need to run the football, Cobbs, and they need to be error-free. The punt return where they got the fumble caused an, uh, give them a chance to score Oklahoma. That's not what you want to do. You have to test Jason White, his running, his mobility. See how well he's throwing the football. Jason White has been on target so far, and I think special teams are key. They've got to make some plays there. They cannot make errors in the, in the special team area. Well, this could be a long night for, for North Texas. Cobb seven on the run, second and three from the 31 for UNT, down 10 nothing in a steady downpour. Cobbs, oh my, hit hard, bounces off to try to make something of it, but a loss in the play at the 29. That was Lance Mitchell, number 10, just stepping in the hole and filling in like a linebacker should. Lance Mitchell hit Cobbs in the backfield and almost had a tackle for loss, but he couldn't wrap up on the play. Lance Mitchell is a physical middle linebacker. That's what they want here from the Sooners defense. Take a look as Mitchell pops into the hole here, reads it well, gets it underneath the pulling guard, and just doesn't wrap up Cobbs, but he's got some help there that Sooners defense built has a lot of speed. Now, Broadney Poole, the sophomore out of Houston Westbury High School, finished him off after Mitchell with the initial hit. Third and five now at the 29 for the Mean Green. Smith hands it off. Cobb. 35-yard line, first down, North Texas, and boy, did they need that. I will just mention that the opener, Gary, we did last year at Texas, they held Texas defensively. The Longhorns only ran for 55 yards in that, or 28 yards in that ball game, but North Texas did nothing offensively, and their defense finally wore out. Well, that's the equalizer. If your offense can run the football, make a, make a statement here against this defense, and hey, keep the offense off the field, I mean, excuse me, the defense off the field, you'll have a chance. You don't want that defense running out there all the time trying to stop this sooner offense. The offense has to respond, and first down is a good way to get that started. First to 10 at the 35, and Smith wants to throw it and does, and completes it outside near the 42-yard line. A flag is thrown. Michael Thrash, the receiver, Stopped at the 43-yard line, but a penalty on the play. By the way, that Oklahoma State-Nebraska game, Nebraska beating Oklahoma State 17-7 in Lincoln. And boy, a huge Big 12 opener for both clubs, but particularly Lincoln-Nebraska and the Huskers, who went 7-7 seven and seven last year. What a scene that was with 800 former Nebraska players back today. Yeah, preliminary call here is going to be offsides against the defense, and they're going to take the play here. See Daryl Dickey declining this penalty. And Offside on the defense. Penalty is refused. Second down. Well, that's one of those you just guessed on. Whether you're going to take the five yard penalty and be first and five, but now you're second and two. I guess he feels like his offense is capable of getting that first down with just a couple of yards to go. Second and two, ball at the 43. Branch in motion. Smith calling him. Long count. Cobbs 
Boy, the hole was plugged, and Mitchell and crew there. Cobb still on his feet trying to get loose and is finally brought down. Patrick Cobb's doing everything he can to hang in there. Poole finally finished him off. Remaining tacklers was Teddy Lehman, number 11. And number 23, Rodney Poole. Welcome to Fox Sports Chicago that has joined us now is North Texas and Oklahoma. The number one ranked Sooners living up to the billing so far with a 10-0 lead. I'm Bill Land alongside Gary Reasons down on the sideline in full rain gear. John Radigan tonight here in Norman. The shower started just as the game started and the Sooners have poured on up 10-0. Got a big turnover on a fumbled punt and a hit and then took it in for the easy score and DeCarlo a field goal along with that. Whistle stopped this play from getting underway on a third and seven. Yeah, a few flags here. Things not getting started well. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, third down. Those are those errors, Bill, that I tell you, you just cannot do coming in here and playing against the number one team in the country and perhaps the number one defense in the country. You can't have false starts. Make yourself start further back. Now it's going to be a third and long situation where they have, you know, third and seven, third and eight is somewhat manageable, but now you're third and 12. Those are tough. See the penalties so far tonight. Last year, these two teams have both had great success winning their leagues, but Oklahoma, 44 penalties for the year, 618 yards. North Texas, 105 penalties, 928 yards. So something Daryl Dickey hopes they can improve on it this year. Third and 12 now for the mean green of North Texas. Drew Smith, plenty of time here. Incomplete. Intended for a diving branch near the 45-yard line. Drew Smith, six foot 180, a sophomore from Bay City, Texas. Last year completed 46% of his passes for over 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. Well, the design is good. The play is there, actually in front of the safety and behind the cornerback. Drew Smith just led him a little bit too far, and he's got to settle down, come in here and play at Oklahoma. You know, I don't know how many times you have a chance to play in front of 81,000 people, and Andrew Smith. Probably enjoying the moment, but uh, not connecting on his passes. Antonio Perkins, excellent return man, is back for the Sooners, and he wheels across the 15, the 20, broke another tackle, and goes flying to the 21. Perkins on the return for Oklahoma, and with just 158 to go in the first quarter, Jonas Buckles making the tackle, and the Sooners will get the football back again. Well, they did get the one first down on that drive, Bill, so... North Texas defense was not out there immediately. A good punt here. The thing in this, in this ball game with the rain being the way it is, field position is going to be key, and the kicking game is going to come up big. The ball's going to be a little bit slick because of the light rain. It looks like it's let up somewhat out there now. But field position is key in a game when the weather is a big, big factor in the ball game. Earlier this week, there were 100 degree temperatures. The temperature is no problem tonight, and now the rain coming down here. But it has let up a little bit, that is for sure. Keywon Jones across the 25 to the 26 yard line before Chris Hurd makes the tackle from the linebacker spot. For those viewers that have just tuned in, Ronaldo Works got off to a quick start, the starting tailback tonight, but then got hurt on a uh, play where he actually slipped a little bit in this rain and then got hit, and Kiwan Jones has replaced him here. I haven't, got, I haven't got a word yet on Ronaldo. Don't know if he's gonna have a chance to get back in this football game. Second and five at the 26 yard line. Works leaning out near the 29-yard line for the Jones, I should say, and Jones will make it a third and short. Brandon Kennedy up front, the big defensive tackle that they really think a lot of, a lot of at uh, North Texas needs to make some plays. You know, he needs to be a factor in there. He's the one guy that kind of spearheads things up front, gets things started. He and the linebackers are the heart and soul of that Mean Green defense. Right now, Oklahoma seems to be just bouncing along and getting the yardage they want running the football. Third down and two, ball on the 29. And Jason White wants a timeout. With 50 seconds to go here in this first quarter, Jason White calls timeout for the Sooners with Oklahoma on a 10-0 lead here in Norman. Bill and Gary Reasons and John Radigan with you here. And time for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's go to Mike Goldberg in the studios in Los Angeles for Dr. Pepper game break. 
Bill, thank you very you much. We'll head to the Regia swamp Keys. in Gainesville. Second quarter, Florida and San Jose State. Gators lead 20 to three. Scott Rizloff intercepted by Gus Scott. He'll return it 38 yards for the touchdown. The last time Florida opened the year unranked was 1990. Steve Spurrier's first season. Gators lead 33 at half. Back to you in a rainy Norman. Gators got it going at halftime. Thank you very much, Mike. Well, we have found John Radigan and he's brown. John? Yeah, Bill, I tell you what, you know, they did this reconstruction here at Memorial Stadium. 27 new luxury suites and 8,000 new seats. Oh, what a coincidence. It starts <laughs> raining, and I want to show you the luxury suites. This is one of them. They're absolutely beautiful. You see the great looking kids in here as well. And oh, yeah, it's dry up here as well. I might even be able to get a cold drink. I wonder if I can get the coaches to come up here when I have to interview them at halftime then I'll stay dry the whole game guys they call you a lot of things dumb is not one of them <laughs> and he is smart enough to come out of the rain well, they say that whole side of the complex I haven't had a chance to go over there yet but it's just phenomenal and the uh, Oklahoma Sooners are, are really proud of this complex and they talk about 81,000 people being here the, the first the largest crowd ever to watch a sporting event in the state of Oklahoma this is a pretty neat place. Yeah, 74 million and counting is what they have done with the renovation and just uh, adding to it as the building process goes on here. Thanks, John. Third and two now for the 29, following the timeout. White got upended and it is incomplete, intended for Brandon Jones. And White hit just as he let go by Chris Hurd, who came in from the linebacker spot. That's a good defensive play there by North Texas. Jason White has some pressure on him as he throws the ball, trying to fit one in there. First pretty good lick that he's taken on the lower extremities. We're looking at both legs there, both surgically repaired. Jason White took a pretty good shot. Coach there on the sideline say, hey, you need to get rid of that ball a little earlier. You won't take that shot. Jamel Branch sets up for the punt return as Blake Ferguson on a fourth and two from the 29 stands on his own 15 yard line. Low snap, handles it nicely. Branch thrash will stay away from it and it is fielded there by Oklahoma's Joan Petit recovered the fumble on the last punt and that kick 35 yards for Oklahoma and UNT sees things settle down just a little bit now and a chance to get its offense back on the field with 36 seconds to go in the first quarter well they've decided to go with a young man at quarterback uh, Andrew Smith who led that football team a year ago wouldn't be surprised to see Scott Hall come into the game before too long if uh, Andrew doesn't get things going here. Scott Hall, very capable quarterback in his own right, as junior this year. But Andrew did well a year ago in, in camp. You know, Daryl Dickey was saying, hey, these two guys are so even. He went into the quarterback's meeting room and said, hey, guys, it's so even. He flip a coin. And it, you know, really was kind of that way. That's how they decided. And Andrew Smith is out there. They at his numbers last year. And he's kind of having a slow start tonight. First and 10 at the 37. That Oklahoma defense having something to do with that is UNT. Just trying to establish something going here on the ground and carrying the football. Polkwood carrying the football this time for North Texas. His first carry of the night. Just one first down as we get ready to close out the first quarter here for. North Texas and Oklahoma just one first down for the mean green and that will do it the end of the first period and when we come back it'll be a second and eight from the 39 for Daryl Dickey Dickey's North Texas team it is Oklahoma with a 10-0 lead here in Norman Oklahoma with a 10-0 lead after the first quarter here in Norman. Bill Land, Gary Reeses, John Radigan with you. The NFL returns to Fox on Sunday, September 7th with a doubleheader. Begins with America's number one pregame show as JB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy get you ready for NFL kickoff 2003. Then the Rams take on the Giants as both teams try to start their season with a win. And then the Falcons head to Dallas where Bill Parcells begins his quest to bring these Cowboys back to glory. That or other regional action and coverage begins September 7th on Fox. Check local listings at foxsports.com for games and start times in your area. Second quarter to begin. Second and eight from the 39 for UNT. Smith pitches it to Cobbs, and Cobbs nowhere to go. A loss in the play at the 37-yard line. Really hard to go sideline to sideline against this defense. Just too much speed. Lance Mitchell and company making plays all over the place, and Lance 
can run around the corner with the best of them. He's on the weak side here, number 10. Watch him just get in the backfield here. Got Zuniga leading the charge, but Lance Mitchell in the hole right there to make the play. North Texas in the first quarter. Just 22 yards of offense, Gary. 13 on seven rushing plays, nine yards on the pass. Oklahoma, on the other hand, 89 yards of offense, 46 to the ground, 43 in the air, and they had the 10-0 lead. Third and 10, and a timeout called by UNT now. As Drew Smith wants to talk it over here to start this second quarter with 14-15. We're watching it all on Fox Sports Net. Stay with us for Norman. College football presented by Kyocera returns to Fox Sports Net tomorrow. Fifth-ranked Texas will get its season underway. Longhorns will host another Sun Belt Conference team, New Mexico State. College football continues right here on Fox Sports Net. Check local listings at foxsports.com for the start time in your area. That is 6 o'clock Central, New Mexico State and Texas. Mac Brown excited about what his Longhorns bring to the table this year. Third down and 10. The ball on the 37-yard line for UNT. Crowd roaring. Drew Smith incomplete intended for thrash and hit hard on the play and that ball was thrown well that time by the quarterback Andrew Smith the sophomore does a good job of getting it outside thrash has to make that catch the ball is a little slick but you see coaches coming over and telling it quarterback hey you're doing a good job leading the offense throw the ball out there your receivers just have to make these plays that would have been a first down Perkins covering on the play and Perkins will stay on now as Oklahoma We'll get the ball on the punt. Candlebar to Perkins and got away from one defender. Perkins cuts it up to the 30. Helmets flying everywhere, and Perkins across to the 34-yard line for Oklahoma. Perkins, one of the most dangerous returners in the Big 12, for sure. Does a good job on punt returns for him, gets good field position. You can start with good field position here at home. The Sooners feel like they can move the ball down the field. That spread offense they've been running, Bill, for the last several years since Bob Stoops has come in here. Really put some good results on the board. The national championship season of 2000. Got a penalty and being enforced here. Jason White now having a chance to, to lead this team for a senior season. Bob Stoops has decided to go with him. and. It's like he's got his feet under him pretty well out there. Throwing the ball and making, making good decisions. The spread offense gives him a chance to, to do multiple things and spread the ball around. Not one guy is going to be his favorite target out there. They move the ball around to a lot of people. And they do miss one guy, Quentin Griffin. I'll tell you, that young man last year was pretty special in his career here at Oklahoma. It was pretty, uh, pretty remarkable. 4,000 yards rushing and Griffin, just such a mainstay. And boy, what a tremendous competitor. First down, and the pass is complete across the 35-yard line as Oklahoma goes to their tight end, James Moses, a junior out of Houston, Texas. Of course, Trent Smith is no longer here with such a star. Moses, one of three guys they like, Gary. Now they split him out, got him up the seam. Good pass that time by White, and you see a little athletic ability. They're running after the catch. They get production out of a tight end position. That's going to be a plus here for the Sooners. Moses considered the most athletic of their three tight ends. Chris Chester may be the best blocker. And then Lance Donnelly, a senior from Weatherford, Oklahoma, is the most experienced. So it's going to take your pick for Bob Stoops and crew. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. And White all day to throw it, and he wants deep. And it is complete at the 10-5. Touchdown, Oklahoma, Brandon Jones. Jason White got it all. Jones there and Oklahoma, 16-nothing. Play action pass. I don't know if Jason White can throw this ball any further than he does here. You got the man-to-man -man coverage. Pearl just lets him slip through his hands, and good job that time bringing it in, and hey, nobody there to stop him. Brandon Jones, a junior out of Texarkana, Texas, comes up with the touchdown grab. 64 yards, and DiCarlo gets the point after, and the Sooners. You want it short runs, you want it big plays, they've shown it all here so far, 17-0.
Any questions about Jason White and how well he's going to play? He's just 7 of 9 and 127 yards and two touchdowns. Nothing wrong with him. He's Take, doing fine. Think he's healthy? Taking a break on the sideline there. That was an excellent throw that time on the play-action pass. Got his own coverage, and he let his receiver out there well. Jason White looks real comfortable back there. And a little cheerleading on the sideline. Branch and Cobbs are deep. Cobbs takes it. He takes a knee in the end zone to bring it out on the touchback. Well, the defense for Mean Green, they play a lot of zone coverage. Here's a deep safety, here's a deep safety. You're going to retreat. You're going to have a receiver come up and get past the safety. Take a look from the outside here. You're going to see the Jones come inside. All that uh, the quarterback does is lead him out there, and you miss the tackle, and that's a pretty easy score. Brandon Jones with the TD for Oklahoma. And the Sooner offense under Bob Stoops, well, 52 touchdowns of 25 plus yards. This is just the start of his fifth year. 147 scoring drives, two minutes or less. That is explosive. Well, those are explosive plays, and we have a change of quarterback here. You've got Scott Hall coming in the ball game. Hall is a junior from Schertz, Texas, 6-1-2-11. Started the opener last year against Texas, but had a shoulder injury and then this pass is incomplete, intended for Cobbs, as Hall got a red shirt last year. Jonathan Jackson, I think, got a tip on that play. But Hall's a guy two years ago, Gary, that led him to the bowl appearance in the New Orleans Bowl when he threw for 17 touchdowns to 11 interceptions and over 1,400 yards. Yeah, he was the leader. I tell you, a couple years ago he played very well, but an injury that stopped him against uh, would have gotten the start last year, but that pectoral muscle, he just cannot throw the football when that happens, and he was gone for the year. Second and 10 for the Mean Green from its own 20-yard line. Cobbs the lone back. Branch the man in motion. They pitch it to Branch. Cannot get to the corner. That Sooner speed is there in mass. Leading the way, Teddy Lehman and also Brodney Poole. It's like watching a sea of red run from sideline to sideline. There's 10, 11, 12. But just watch the red shirts. Don't worry about color. Or just watch the red shirts come into the picture. One, two, three, four, five. They're all around the football. I'll tell you, we talked to Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator, one of the co-coordinators for the Sooner defense, and he said, hey, the basis of their defense, their philosophy is speed. They bring guys who play in the secondary. In high school, they play them at linebacker. They take linebackers, they play them on the defensive line. They want to get speed on the field at all times, and I'll tell you, with Teddy Lehman and company out there, they've got a lot of it. And this is without Brandon Everidge, who's on the preseason Thorpe Award watch list, sitting out this first game for disciplinary reasons. They are loaded. Penalty on there, we got a delay. One of the things I really like about Bob Stoops is he's going to discipline people if they need to be disciplined. And every job basically is open every game, Gary. You earn your job by what you do every day on the football field. Well, he, he creates accountability. That's exactly what you want in a football team. You want the guy playing right guard accountable to the right tackle to the guy on the defensive line. And that's what he does with his players out here. And he communicates very well to them. There's a little magic that he has with his coaching staff and how they relate to this football team. Third and 16, the ball on the 14. North Texas with a 17-0 deficit facing the Mean Green. And third down. 16 to go. Hall just dumps it, and an ineligible receiver, Zuniga, the right guard, ends up with the football. Well, he's going to get two penalties here. Zuniga, the senior right guard, he needs to know that even the ball thrown at you, you need to not catch that thing. But he caught the football, and then he spiked, and he's going to get an unsportsmanlike penalty. So it's going to be moved back pretty bad against the, the Mean Green. They're going to be kicking from deep in their end zone, Bill. Scott Hall trying to make a play. You see it's a screen play set up here, and the fullback never gets out. The tight, It's going to be a tight end back screen. Teddy Lehman with the pressure on the quarterback, and he throws it away. And right there in the, the breadbasket for Zuniga, he's the right guard. Watch him come out here on the play, and you're going to see the ball lay into his breadbasket. The tight end couldn't get up, as I said, and he catches it. You don't catch that big guy. You need to let that thing go. And now watch him spike it, and that's going to be the second penalty. Boy, Zuniga didn't need to do that. You're right. That. Uh, and for a first-team all-conference player, you, you expect uh, well, him to know might, that a senior. Well, that might be the first pass that's ever been thrown to. <laughs> you know, he, he kind of likes that thing. Hey, I can make a play here. but he Well, knew if it. you are going to catch it, then go run and score, <laughs> and hopefully they don't figure out who you are out there. Well, that wasn't a guard-eligible play, Bill. We couldn't <laughs> do that one. 
Well, those are mistakes. Those are things that you can't do as a football team, and Daryl Dickey knows that. He's got Scott Hall getting in there in his first series, and Scott, that wasn't a good series. You know that, and uh, you want to give a chance to get back in there and redeem yourself and, and uh, get your football team going. And Hall, of course, trying to avoid the safety. He's just trying to get rid of the football out there. And then Nick Zanaga. The receiver downfield. That penalty is refused. After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike, on the offense, half the distance to the goal. It'll be fourth down. All right, as they sort that out, let's go down to John Radigan with an update about Ronaldo Works. Yeah, Bill, I've been watching Ronaldo down here on the sidelines, and he has his helmet on. In fact, he has snapped his helmet. It looks like, yeah, he's going back in. It looks like he is ready to go back into the game. He has actually been running and cutting and doing everything to, I think, convince himself more than anyone else that that knee is just fine. I wouldn't be at all surprised on the next Oklahoma Offensive Series to see Ronaldo Works back in there, guys. All right, fans are geared up as Candlebar stands at the back of the end zone to kick it away. And the low kick. Perkins fields it. Trying to go upfield now. 35. For the 45. 40. Breaks another tackle. And Antonio Perkins gets it down to the 37 yard line on 11 yard return after a 41 yard punt from Candlebar. Oklahoma with the lead 17 0. Welcome back to the University of Oklahoma. Jason White and the Sooners operate from their own brother from the 37 with the first and 10 and already owning a 17-0 lead here. And up the middle works back in the game and carrying the football again. So a good sign for Oklahoma as Taylor Casey makes the tackle for UNT. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, John Radigan with you on Fox Sports Net. Pretty good production by the OU offense, Bill. Before that play, 173 yards total offense. Good job throwing the football by Jason White, getting a couple of scores at 127 yards passing, getting uh, Ronaldo Works back in the game. I know Sooner fans are very happy about that, going out with a tender knee, but uh, good to see him back in the football game. Yeah, and they're going against a very solid UNT defense that last year only allowed 290 yards per game. And one of the tops in the country, not just the best in the Sun Belt Conference. And White completes this one to Lance Donnelly. And he was down at the 30-yard line, so it'll be a third down coming up for the Sooners. Spencer and Casey were there for the Mean Green of North Texas. Well, we talked about spreading it around. They've done that. They throw the ball. A couple of tight ends get in a picture now. Rankin's catching the touchdown pass, and then Wilson on, on the score. So Jason White is distributing the football and the spread offense, and I'm sure that that pleases uh, Bob Stoops. Look at the defense for the Mean Green and what it meant last year, and... With those eight starters returning, they expect to be very sound again this year. They've got Baylor next week, Air Force and Arkansas still to go in the non-conference slate. But works on the third down call, needed three, didn't get it as he got stuffed. And Wassum and Spencer there for North Texas. Well, that was a good stop that time. Look at work here. Let's watch his footwork here for running the football. Steps up into the hole, he, he sees that old Booger Kennedy right there, number 92, stuffed that hole. and. Cody Spencer, number 48, steps in there as well. What is it, Booger Kennedy? They say, well, <laughs> I keep yelling at linemen, get low. I am low. He said, I, I don't even worry about getting low. He's got strings hanging off his jersey and everything. He's a, he's a football player. Fourth and three, and the Sooners will go for it here. Maybe not. Yep. Timeout. Jason White call a timeout to talk it over. And we'll take a brief timeout as well. You're watching it on Fox Sports Net. College football from Norman. The Sooners with a 17-0 lead in the second quarter. <laughs> Oklahoma with a 17-0 lead over North Texas here on Fox Sports Net. The Sooners at DiCarlo field goal. Jawan Rankins, a three-yard TD pass from Jason White and then White going deep. A 64-yard touchdown toss to Brandon Jones. And as he brings the Sooners back on the field, they now face a fourth and three at the 30. Gary, what do you like here? Well, they can move the pocket a little bit. Jason White's going to be in the shotgun here. Hand it off inside on the draw. But watch him roll a little bit and toss the football. Wilson in motion. Works as the back to the right of White. Fourth and three. White dumps it across. 
tight end, complete first down, James Moses, just inside the 25-yard line, and the Sooners have maintained possession. Sometimes those guys in the black and white shirts, they get in the way. That's the umpire back there. He kind of takes a little shot here. Hey, look at this guy. He's going to get in the, in the picture here. Bing, kabang, kabong. And, oh, and you go down sometimes. That's a good play by the Sooners in the first down. Jason White throwing, finding the open receiver for the first down. Don't have to get too many yards, and that's a... Contact sport all the way around. Boy, hopefully he's everybody all right. I laugh. I tell you what, I don't know how they don't get hit more often. Uh, White back to throw on first and ten. Wide open and complete works. No, he did not have possession of the football. Wow. How do you miss Ronaldo Works coming out of the backfield? Nobody accounting for the for the tailback out on the slip screen here. All the way around down the sideline. Ronaldo, the ball led out there for him by Jason White. They look at the pass here. You see, you see him leave out of the backfield, just toss it out there. And it looks like it's going to be an easy touchdown, but Ronaldo just can't get his get a grip on it. And the worst thing is you take a shot at the end. He caught five last year for 98 yards and one touchdown. Trying to stay in bounds, trying to concentrate on catching the football. Second and 10 for the 25 of UNT. Works. Hit hard, good pursuit that time by the UNT defense as coming up was Craig Jones to make the tackle and Jonas Buckles, the safeties. Buckles is one of those safeties for the Mean Green defense. It's one of the biggest hitters in the conference. They really like him and what he does in there. Coming up from that safety spot, making a lot of plays for that defense. He and Craig Jones, both of those guys are regarded very highly across the conference as big hitters. Jones, first team all-conference pick last year with 90 tackles, and Buckles a number two all-conference selection. Third and eight at the 23 for the Sooners now. White again for the shotgun. Incomplete, intended for Travis Wilson inside the eight-yard line. Jones covering on the play that time, and Oklahoma now We'll bring on the field goal unit. Now, what Jason White is experiencing here is he's seeing a, a solid zone defensive effort here by North Texas. They play two deep zone coverage. They get their linebackers in pass drops, and they take under the five underneath zone. So you've got to throw it behind that linebacker depth to get something in there. He's worked a few in there, but that's what North Texas does. They're kind of a bend but don't break type of a defense. They'll let you make some plays up front, but they don't want to give up the big ones. Be a 40-yard field goal. He hit from 37 at the other end, and that was in a pretty good rain. And DiCarlo, this one is up and good. So it's all going for the Sooners tonight as DiCarlo gets his second field goal, and Oklahoma tacks on three more. It's now a 20 to nothing Sooner lead over North Texas. Eight twenty-nine to go here in the second quarter, and the Sooners with a twenty-nothing lead. Now, when you get production out of your kicker, Trey DeCarlo, as the Sooners did a year ago, and now coming in here two for two, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Bob Stoops knows that. Hey, if I get down there close enough and I can roll out my kicker, I'm going to get three points on the board, and that's exactly what you want to have happen. Well, there's been so much hype about this football team that Bob Stoops said in the news conference the other day, feels like it's mid-season. We've talked so much about this team and the players. He goes, thank goodness the games are starting. Well, you know, one of the things that's happened here over the years in, in college football and sports in general is the onset of the Internet and onset of sports talk radio. And there's so much more demands on the time of the coaches and the players. And just look at all the, the, the cities in the country. you got got 100 major cities, and each of them probably have a couple of sports talk radios and radio shows and four of the four shows a day just multiply all those and Bob Bob Stoops phone rings a lot saying hey I want you on a radio show just five minutes coach just five minutes he just he just didn't have enough time to do it and that's the demands on these football teams and especially a number one team ranked in the country and the kick taken by Branch and he'll take a knee and our Nissan scoring drive here in this first half, eight plays, 14 yards installed. DiCarlo takes care of business, though, with a 40-yard field goal after they convert on a fourth and three. Let's go down now to John Radigan. Hey, Bill, we've been talking a lot about the Booger Kennedy and the interesting nickname that Booger has. I got a friend with the same nickname, and his line is always, you get caught picking your nose one time, and you get called Booger for the rest of your life. But I found out that's not how Booger got his nickname. His mother and grandmother used to call him my little Booger Bear 
and the booger part stuck with him. That is how Brandon Kennedy became known as Booger. You guys can keep calling him Booger if you want, but let me tell you, Daryl Dickey calls him Mr. Booger. <laughs> <laughs> Call him whatever he wants, the way that guy can play. A big hit after the pass completion to Baldwin. And Pasha Jackson is the one that put it on him. Jackson, senior from Hayward, California. Well, you got another linebacker that can play here. Pasha Jackson just comes up from the outside and kabingo, that's what you want to do. That's a hog tie and a pull down and everything. That's almost a rodeo stunt right there. Talking back about Booger yeah, Kennedy, you know, he's a fun guy. He likes to play, and he's a heart and soul of that defense. And, John, we might just get you one of those bobblehead dolls. What do you, you like one of those? <laughs> what, do you order those on the Internet or something? That's pretty cool. Cordell Baldwin is the man that made the recession, and uh, he took a booger of a hit that time. Second and six, the ball on the 24 now. And the pitch to Branch. As they're trying to get him more of the football, and Branch... Rides it hard near the 30, got the first down, it appears. And the second first down, and Gary, we're 739 from halftime. Well, I tell you, this is a nice play here. Well set up here. It's the option play. You got Branch coming around behind, read it inside, pitch it, and you win the corner. What I mean by that is they block everyone on the perimeter and come up on the outside, and you're there in the secondary, and you bang it through for the first down. They want to get the ball in Jamel Branch's hands, number 34 for the Mean Green, because he is a very talented football player. Last year, 20, seven receptions, 384 yards. First and 10, the ball at the 31-yard line, and you see what's been going average yards on first down. It's been all Oklahoma. Let's see if the defense of the Sooners stiffens here. Breaking through is Cobbs, and the Oklahoman back in his home state rolls across midfield. First down at the 44 of the Sooners. He broke through inside. Good blocking up front. All you do is jump over one guy inside. Take a look at Patrick Hobbs' footwork here. Watch, there's a pile at the line. Get his legs up right there. Get over the one tackle. You can't arm tackle or shoulder tackle. You've got to wrap him up, and that's a good job that time by Patrick Cobbs getting in there. Take a look at Teddy Lehman, the middle linebacker here. He gets walled inside pretty good. That's a good job of blocking there on the outside. And that was Weston Thaggard, the freshman there, playing tackle. He came in on Teddy Lehman. Patrick Cobbs now six carries for 33 yards and first and 10 at the 43 for North Texas. Cobbs brought down hard after just about back to the line of scrimmage. An Oklahoma defensive front so quick. Well, this helps the quarterback, too. If you can get the ball running north and south instead of coming up in third long situations, third manageable, you know, Scott Hall's kind of getting in a rhythm here. The first time he was out there, kind of a hostile situation, he kept going backwards, you know, and it, did, it doesn't work very well that way and throwing from his end zone. Now he's across midfield into the Sooners uh, part of the field and having a chance here to probably cap off a pretty good drive. Second and 10 at the 43-yard line, 6.34 to go before halftime. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, John Radigan with you. Branch again swings deep in motion. Play action. Hall, the quarterback, dumps it off and incomplete. Good pressure put on Hall that time by Jonathan Jackson, the Houston native, as he was giving him quite a run. Well, you got the defense with speed. That's what Oklahoma plays with, Bill. They rush the quarterback very well, and then they cover outside very well also. Scott Hall really had nowhere to throw that football, so he throws it away smartly. Sets up a third and ten. North Texas third and ten for the 43. One of five and third down conversions this evening. And Hall calls a timeout here. You know, as tough a night as it has been for UNT, they're able to maintain this drive. And you know, Daryl Dickey's thinking, we get a touchdown here. We're back 20, get on the board, get a little conflicts going, and uh, things aren't so gloomy after all. Well, if they punch this ball in, then you know they're going to get the ball in the second half. They elected to defer, so they put their defense out there first. So you get your offense with confidence. Daryl Dickey knows, hey, if we can march it down and score on this defense some kind of way, whether it's a field goal or put a ball in the end zone for a touchdown, that's going to be a big confidence booster for his football team. You just got to find a way to keep chipping away at, at this defense. Now, there's a lot of weapons on defense, and one of the guys we haven't talked about up front is Tommy Harris, number 97. I tell you, this young man is probably one of the best defensive linemen in the country. We haven't talked a lot about their whole defense line the linebackers seem to be making all the plays but part of the reason why they do run and play so well is that defensive line play with Tommy Harris and, and Corey Klein and company up there Dvorak there's a lot of players up there and Dan Cody all of them are there they're making you know, good plays up front for the Sooner defense 
Well, coming up, stay with us on Fox Sports Net, the Nissan Halftime Report with Mike Kellen and Billy Ray. They'll all be aboard and update you top 25 scores and highlights and much more. If you didn't catch it earlier today, it was Oklahoma State falling to Nebraska in the Big 12 opener, 17-7. Saw that Longhorn preview slot there. Texas and New Mexico State will go at it tomorrow night on Fox Sports Net. And Joel Myers, along with Dave Lapham and Jim Knox, are down in Austin getting ready for that contest. And that should be a dandy as well. Another Big 12 Sun Belt matchup as New Mexico State will go to Texas. Third and 10 at the 43. Crowd starts shouting for that Sooner defense. Hall out of the shotgun, hands it off to Cobbs. Cobbs drags a couple with him. Almost got it, but is going to be short. And you almost wonder with that call, are they saying, all right, we're going to have two downs to get it? Possibly, very possibly on that is what they're wanting to do is get in there. I think they can probably beat the defense, though, on the draw play. And they have Cobb shows the strength that he has. He's, he was just carrying Mitchell. The linebacker jumped on his back, and Cobb just powered for three or four more yards. Cobbs out of Tecumseh, Oklahoma. Stirring around, get as many tickets as he could for family and friends. Not too far from here in Norman. And off to a pretty good show here so far. Fourth and four. Yes, they will go for it. Hall. Incomplete. Intended for Branch. Good coverage. Straight was there. Derek Straight, senior out of Austin, Texas. Another one of the first team all Big 12 performers in the secondary and a blanket on Jamel Branch. That's good coverage in the secondary. This is a timing play. It's play action. The quarterback's going to fake inside. Step, release right now. Receiver has to come back to the football. The ball sailed for Hall on the throw, and Jamel Branch just couldn't pull it in. You see Matt McCoy sneaking in 34, trying to come up with the interception. His straight was right there. And Oklahoma takes over, 5.36 to go, second quarter. First and 10, Sooners from the 37, and they run on with the no huddle at the play being called from the sideline. Wilson in motion, and Jason White, the quarterback. He's got a pair of touchdown tosses already tonight. 20 to nothing, Sooners. Sets up Jones on the screen. Kiwan Jones leads toward the first down territory as Jones out to the 46-yard line. Pressure was put on by Brandon Kennedy, but able to get it by him to Jones. I think this is a key play for this Oklahoma offense. This is one that they've got to make go time and time again. When you want to be able to run the football and throw the football, a change up is that screen because when you get the running game working, you feel like they're going to play on the play fake. And also, when you want to throw the ball, it takes away the pass rush a little bit. You dump it in there. That was a play that Griffin used to run very, very well here for the Sooner football team. Second and one at the 46. And Jones, the keeper, and the first down. Move the chains, keep possession with just inside five minutes to go. First half here in Norman. Cardwell making the stop that time. I think Jason White's got all those butterflies gone, wondering about his knees, and I think all the question marks are answered. He's, he's ready to go. We talk about that Nissan halftime show. Uh, you know about Oklahoma State, Nebraska. How about Missouri and Illinois and that wild finish where Missouri held on for a big victory against Illinois and St. Louis today. Another notch in the Big 12 belt. White to Jones again, and Jones brought down at the 48-yard line. Taylor Casey is there for North Texas. And it'll be second down coming up for the Sooners. You know, this offensive line here for the Sooners may be the best they've had here in a number of years. They've got some excellent players up there. Jamal Brown, the right tackle, number 55. Hey, he is one that they're looking at very highly. Davin Joseph, number 77, has come over, played defensive tackle, and now playing right guard for the Sooners. That right side of this offense may be the best they've had in some time, Bill. Jones, they fake to him, and then White keeps the football and slides. <laughs> as they had a little mishandle there on the exchange. One thing they have told Jason White is this is a guy that reacts and likes to run with the football and they don't want him to not be Jason White. But I think that's kind of an example of say, hey, sometimes just go ahead, give up on the play, and keep yourself healthy. Well, early in his career, they knew that he was an instinctive uh, scrambler. He would run with a football and they know he's gonna do that some, but you know, they like him to make the smart choice and don't do it all the time. And you know, tonight here in this football game in wet conditions, that was a smart play to take the slide. Third and six at the 49 of North Texas. White 
protection breaks down. He keeps the football this time. And now White does cover up and slide forward, but he got the first down. Close, Bill. It's going to be close on the spot. Depends on where he puts it down. Spencer. Cody Spencer making the tackle. Yeah, they may have to measure this one. Jason White doing a pretty good job of running up there. Watch him here. See Kennedy, number 92, coming. Going to put the pressure on inside, and Jason White steps up. An official's timeout for measurement on this play. That's how close it is. With 3.04 to go here in the first half. Yeah, kind of interesting here going back a player to those, those screen passes to Jones. He only caught one ball last year, so another new wrinkle as Chuck Long, the uh, assistant coach, I take a look at this measurement, that's how close they are. But Chuck Long's always adding new things to this bunch. I just love the way this staff works together, and they're never standing pat. Well, somebody has to fill that void that Quentin Griffin did on catching footballs out of the backfield whether it's going to be Ronaldo Works or Kiwan Jones or somebody else to step in there because they're going to throw the ball to the running backs here at Oklahoma. They spread the ball around. We've talked about that, and it's good to see both of those guys getting in the backfield, and you know, they're, going to, they're going to catch the footballs, Bill. They're going to have to do it. Fourth down and just an inch or two as White steps up under center. Flag is thrown. Somebody jumped. Looked like Chester, the tight end. Yeah, the right side of the line there, just quick start. It's going to was a third and inch, or excuse me, fourth and inch is going to be fourth and five in a few inches now. Probably bring in the punter here. That would be Blake. Prior Burgess. to the snap, false start on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul on the offense that's 15 additional yards fourth down well that makes it a no-brainer as far as they have to do you see bob stoop said who is it as he wants to know well that coach is a disciplined coach no, he won't he, put he, up with that no sir he will <laughs> not he, he he's in control of his football team he preaches and coaches very much to the line that you you know you play within the rules you play aggressively between the whistles and don't do anything stupid that's going to hurt your football team where they had a chance there to get the first down with a couple inches. Now it's fourth and 20 and uh, have to bring on the punt. The 20 to nothing. That means Blake Ferguson, as he's averaged 40 yards on his first two punts, comes on here. Fourth down and 20. He's from his own 37. Jamel Branch is the deep man. He's at the 25. This one blocked, and North Texas will scoop it up as they fall on it. Still loose down there and inside the 30 yard line. Jonas Buckles, Bill. Boy, talk about a turnaround here. The North Texas faithful that have made the trip up from Denton said, All right, we got a little momentum here before the half. A chance to use the short field and try to get on the board. Jonas Buckles watching the middle here. Number one come right in the middle of your screen. Nobody touches him. He goes for the block spot, up ends the punter, and does a good job of getting the ball. North Texas, the ball behind the line of scrimmage. They can advance it, but it's going to be North Texas' ball. Inside the 30 yard line. And what this will do is flip the switch to the 80,000 OU fans and say, shut out. We don't want to give up anything here to fire that defense. Nice play by Buckles and UNT with the ball back, first and 10 on the 29 of the Sooners. 2.32 to operate with. Branch in motion. Hall and the option to Cobbs. Uh oh. Cobbs. Swarm Harris led the way. There's Tommy, the junior from Colleen, Texas, and 100% healthy this year. Well, too much speed. There's too much speed on this defense. Take a listen. You mentioned we didn't have a chance to talk much about him. This guy last year. A groin injury that really slowed him down. Still had an outstanding year by college football standards, but not at Harris standards. He's healthy, and it shows you with the speed and quickness there. Second and 16. Cobbs can't handle on the pass from Hall, and it'll be third and 16. Well, that's what this defense does. They play pressure defense, Bill. They're going to come up, and they're going to be in your face. He's trying to set up a screen play there, but good reaction by Tommy Harris on the defense. is jumping out there, and... Scott Hall's throwing the ball to the ground. 
So a tough call for Daryl Dickey, his offensive coordinator Ramon Flanagan and crew is UNT. Now third and 16 on the 35 yard line. Hall calls a timeout. North Texas with 55 yards of offense so far in this first half to 206 for Oklahoma. And it's been hard to come by. Last time out called there. I think the fans are having a good time here, Bill. The retro uniforms and uh, seeing all the All-Americans come back. A lot of history and a lot of tradition here at, at the University of Oklahoma. We saw the banners earlier, all the national championships they've won here. I tell you, they've had some great, great coaching staffs through here and great personnel. Yeah, Joe Castiglione, the athletic director, even decided he'd take it all the way and dress as Bud Wilkinson, the legendary one-time football coach here. The teams after the 50s, and that's the uniform look, is the 1950s uniform here tonight. And, boy, they had some outstanding teams that established that great tradition. And Bud, of course, won three national championships in his tenure. And Barry Switzer followed up with three of his own before Bob Stoops came in and led the Sooners to their latest national title. But it all really goes back to... Bud Wilkinson and the great tradition that was started here with Oklahoma football. Creative, innovative plays. You see there the triple option play, spin around and halfback pass. All those things, well, those things they still do today. And just 38 conference titles. The latest last year's Big 12 championship where Oklahoma defeated the University of Colorado. And then went on to win over Washington State in the Rose Bowl. And two losses to Oklahoma State and to Texas A&M. And you saw Mike Stoops, one of the coordinators for the defense, walking out there, rallying his troops, trying to get the Sooner defense to, to make a play here on third and long. Third and 16, and Hall pumps. Looking deep, Branch was open, just couldn't get it to him. Jamel Branch got behind the OU defense, and Bassey and Nicholson were out there trying to cover. Well, Jamel Branch gets jammed inside, and he doesn't get his feet underneath him. He's outside. He's going to run up and going to run to the corner here. Quarterback Scott Hall is going to lean it in there. Look at Jamel Branch coming. He gets bumped right there. His footwork is not good, and the ball just sails overneath. And I'm not sure Jamel Branch was even looking for the football. Branch once the Sun Belt Freshman of the Year two years ago. Last year, a second-team all-conference pick, real fine all-purpose player. Now you could try a real long field goal here, but that's not going to do a whole lot for you. This can be a substitution penalty if they let this play go. They need to call a timeout. Now they're out. 141 to go here in the half, and Hall snaps it, scrambling for the best, unloads, and it is incomplete. Attended across the middle for Johnny Quinn, a redshirt freshman from McKinney, Texas, and Verdine put the pressure on him from the OU front. Larry, a freshman out of Lawton here in Oklahoma. That's not what you want to be in, a fourth and long situation against his defense. So much speed, they're going to bring it at you, rush the quarterback, get him in your face, and that defensive line does a good job of getting back there, and then the coverage and the speed in the secondary. A lot of talent that Daryl Dickey and his offensive football team is having to deal with. Coach Dickey, of course, uh, Fond of Norman, Oklahoma. His dad, Jimmy Dickey, was once an assistant coach here under Barry Switzer, 69 72 during that time frame. And he remembers hanging around the locker room, around the great, got to carry Joe Washington's silver shoes. He said he had two pair. I always got to have the spare pair. And of course, he went on to have a fine career at Kansas State playing for his father then. This pass is complete by Oklahoma out to the 38 yard line as. Brandon Jones, who had the long TD reception, is tackled by Walter Priestley on the play. And that's the way this football team is. They're not satisfied here with 20 points going into half. They've got Jason White with his offense out there in the hurry up. Second down and seven. And Oklahoma going right to the air. And again, Brandon Jones on the reception. They may measure for the first down. Let's see. Looks like they got it. They do. Yeah, they're going to move the chains. The, chain, the clock stops on a first down in college football. So Jason White not having to use timeouts. Casey and Brandon Kennedy making the tackle. White completed to Wilson at the 35 yard line. Travis Wilson, a nice reception in traffic. Buckles covering on the play in Oklahoma with a hurry up offense. And inside a minute to go. Just zone coverage here by the defense, and Wilson does a nice job getting inside between the safeties and a nice throw by Jason White. Sooners with one timeout remaining, and White ready to throw again in trouble, and he is brought down. 
Well, Pruitt does a nice job, just explodes the offensive lineman and goes through him for the, for the sack on White, gets down low on him, and Jason White is forced to call that last time out, Bill. Nice play by Pruitt. He's an Oklahoman from El Reno, the western suburb of Oklahoma City. Played at Northeastern Oklahoma A&M last year as an All-American. And ladies and gentlemen, right in around Joseph, the right guard there, just kind of slaps him and goes, rips uppercut, does a nice job. That's good handwork, good coaching for that defensive lineman on the pass rush. With musical selections and video highlights. So the Sooners use their final timeout. Booger Kennedy and crew will gear up for the final 44 seconds. UNT trailing in the football game, 20 to nothing. Sooners 10 in the first quarter, 10 in the second quarter. quarter. And it's been a pair of TD passes from Jason White. Well, Brandon Kennedy, just take a look at some of his accomplishments. Says third in 1A last year with 25 tackles for loss. The Sun Belt preseason defensive player of the year. He was the player of the year period last year. And he led the conference in the Sun Belt with 10 quarterback sacks. Now that, that's, that's amazing for an interior lineman to get sacks because most times those guys are getting double teamed. They're going to pull a guard in the center, shade him on him. He generally plays over the center. And to get 10 quarterback sacks in a season is, is are remarkable numbers for a, what you call a two technique or a defensive tackle. And they've asked Booger to stay off the basketball court for the time being, <laughs> but as a 5'9", 5'10", point guard, he could dunk in his high school days. So it's a point guard. Yeah, point Good guard. Boy, try taking the ball from him. Here's White to throw and does and complete inside the 30-yard line. He got Rankins on this one. Jawan with a TD reception earlier, and it will give Oklahoma clock moving now as they set up. Priestley covering on the play. No rust on Jason White's on Bill. That was a nice throw. And it's third and five. White looking for works out of the backfield. The incompletion stops the clock with 18 seconds remaining in the half. Pearl was covering that time. Carlo Leiter going to try a long field goal. It's a pretty good job, though, by Jason White leading his team down the field. Two or three quick strikes to, to get into North Texas into the football field. A chance here to put three more points on the board as they go to the halftime. So to Carlo, two of two tonight. And DiCarlo sets up on a 46-yard attempt this time as Carlo the ball to be marked at the 36-yard line. And it is long enough. And it is good. So DiCarlo, the trifecta. He is three for three. And the Sooners make it a 23-0 game with 13 seconds to go before intermission. Talked about Trey DiCarlo earlier. That's a pretty good weapon. You can roll him out there three times and get field goals and snap, hold, put it down on the ground, and Trey DiCarlo, hey, look at that spin. Good job that time on the spin. Get the ball around so the kicker doesn't have to kick the laces, and that's good operation. A 46-yarder matches his career high. Last year, he hit a 46-yarder against Texas A&M. He was 16 of 22 last year. You see what he's done tonight, hitting them all. And not in uh, ideal weather conditions, particularly that first one, the 37-yarder. Let's give a little love to Matt McCoy, number 34, the holder on that play. That's what you need to do as a holder, get the ball down and give your, your uh, kicker a chance to, to get that, get, get the points on the board. Of course, McCoy last year had to, before you rush that kicker too much, remember the fake field goal they had against the University of Missouri, where he threw the touchdown pass in that contest and a thriller up in Columbia. So. They've got all the weapons there. And he's doing a good job at safety tonight. He's been in there playing part one of the strong safety spot for him. So Matt McCoy is making a little impact here. Kicking off for Oklahoma for 83, Trey DiCarlo. So DiCarlo will kick it off for the Sooners with a 23-0 lead and 13 seconds to go before the break. Cobbs deep. And Muzzy in the end zone downs it there. I'm happy it went into the end zone. Boy, if that ball had stopped short, the Sooners were down there, and it would have been a real long road to hoe that time. Zach Muzzy, a freshman from Alvin, Texas. I'd like to get him a look here tonight as really impressed with his hands and speed. Well, they started the game with Andrew Smith, at quarterback, and Scott Hollow's come in and tried to lead them and try to do something a little more effective, but just really wasn't there. Hasn't happened for either one of the quarterbacks. Just gonna, you got to credit the Oklahoma Sooner defense. They are fast. They, you know, this team is ranked as probably one of the best returning defenses in the country, returning nine starters, Bill. That's tough to go against. Cobbs keeps the football here, and he is met by Lehman, and 
through. And that will end the first half. So Oklahoma, impressive indeed. The number one ranked team in the nation living up to the billing. McCoy and Lehman finish off Cobbs and the first half. 23-0, the Sooners on top of the mean green from UNT, and they have dominated just about every fashion. They certainly have. Their defense has played very well. Jason White, really exceptional effort, I think, coming out. Got the rust off, got the, all the butterflies gone, and he has performed very well at quarterback. So, Jason White with a pair of TD passes. DiCarlo with three field goals tonight. And the Sooner defense doing the job, allowing just 58 yards of offense to North Texas in this first half. And Oklahoma seems right on track, particularly considering it's a season opener. Let's go down to John Radigan with the Oklahoma head coach, Bob Stoops. Well, coach, obviously the offense puts up lots of points and yards. The defense holds them. It had, you had to feel pretty good about the first uh, half, both sides. Really do. A yeah, few, few foolish mistakes, a couple foolish per personal fouls that break down in our protection, uh, punt protection, which shouldn't happen. But for the most part, though, no, the offense taking care of the ball, moving it, and defense has been sound. So, uh, yeah, it's pleasing to this point. Jason White, no rust at all. Are you as pleased as you can be about the way he's responded from the end? Uh, very much so. I thought he'd play like this, and it feels, uh, it, I'm just happy for him. And, uh, you know, uh, he is. He's executing in a great way right now, and I, you could tell he feels good. Coach, obviously a difficult first half. You knew it was going to be tough against this bunch, though. Yeah, they're very good. We knew that. We made way too many mistakes. Our defense, other than the first drive and one big play, has been out on the field way too long. Uh, but they played pretty good. Uh, that's tough to say when they've given up 243 yards, but they've been out there an awful long time. Offensively, uh, we've lost our poise a little bit. We've got to try to regain that and make some things happen, make some first downs, or it's going to be a long night. You're going to stay with Hall at quarterback? No, we're going to go with Andrew Smith and keep rolling them. All right, we appreciate it, Coach. Have a good second half. That is Daryl Dickey looking for better things in the second half. Back upstairs to you guys now. All right, thank you very much as North Texas and Oklahoma gear up for the second half. Bill Land along with Gary Reasons up top, John Radigan handling things down on the sideline, and Daryl Dickey realizing what his ball club is in store for and what they've gone through. And the kickoff goes to UNT to start the second half, and Cobbs at the 20. Cobbs squirts across the 25 and protects the football before he is brought down on the play. And the UNT will operate there with Clint Ingram making the tackle for the Sooners. Our Web MD halftime stats. Take a look here. A lot of Oklahoma, Gary. I'll tell you what, what Daryl Dickey says is he knows he's up against a great defense. He got 59 yards total offense. Look over here. This is all Jason White passing yards, 198 yards, a couple of scores there. Oklahoma offense is rolling down the field, doing a good job. They haven't ran the ball very effectively. Ronaldo Works, remember, got hurt early, but he came back into the game. So uh, I think that Oklahoma probably concentrated here in the second half trying to run the football. Darrell Dickey and his bunch, they get the ball first in offense, going back with Andrew Smith at quarterback, trying to get something going. So Andrew Smith, the sophomore from Bay City, Texas, we'll see if he can pick it up here a little bit in the second half. You see his first half, just two of five for eight yards. And Smith, the guy who certainly got thrown into the fire last year when Hall went down. And talk about a meat grinder of a schedule last year with North Texas going against Texas, as well as Alabama, TCU, Arizona, and South Florida. A team was much better than some people may have wanted to give them credit for. And uh, then they go into the Sun Belt and uh, it was an escape but certainly have prepared them. And the main thing is they have to stay healthy to have a shot at winning that league. So first and 10 for the 26 for Smith and crew. And the ball loose in the back. And Smith scrambles after it. And Cobb's also there, but Smith recovers it. Well, that's something coaches Cobb. talk about, Bill, is ball security. You've got to be able to take the snap whether it's in a shotgun snap or right there up under the center. And you've got to make sure that you get that in your hands. Andrew Smith is going to roll to his left on the play, but I think he takes a look here to quickly do his left and lets the ball get low, and he just doesn't have the ball security that you want to get the ball. Now, they put themselves back in the hole. It's going to be second and probably 20 plus. Second 21 officially from the 15-yard line. Smith, the short drop. And incomplete, intended for Branch. Straight was all over him. Straight, one of those cornerbacks out there, one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Derek Straight doing a good job outside, staying tight on him. And it's kind of challenging the North Texas receivers, let the ball come in there. 
going to put a pop on him, which he did there. Eric Strait, who has started now 41 straight games. And Derek, 12 career interceptions. And it's now third and 21, the ball at the 15-yard line. Claiborne in the backfield, along with Cobbs. Fake to Cobbs on the play action. And it is intercepted by the Sooners. Matt Oklahoma. McCoy. McCoy, you mentioned he'd been playing back in the safety position. And Matt comes up with the INT. This is just a poor throw here by Andrew Smith. He has his receiver open coming across the middle inside between the linebackers, but he throws it behind him. It's going to be play action passer. The fake to Cobbs right there. And Andrew Smith just lets the ball go. When it goes behind the receiver, you see Jamel Branch. He was wide open right there. And Matt McCoy, number 34, does a good job staying at home and making the play when the ball's there. McCoy, 19 tackles last year, broke up three. The year before, though, he had four interceptions in his sophomore campaign. And you see how big a part that is of Oklahoma's success. Over 20 interceptions over the last four years average. That's impressive. We got another one here for us to start the 2003 year. Dewan Jones, the first down carry for the Sooners as they get the ball deep in UNT territory. And exactly what Daryl Dickey was thinking would not happen, or certainly hoping not happen. The turnover and Oklahoma, the short field to work with. Second and 10 from the 34 yard line. Well, North Texas, they've got to settle down and get into their game and play the, the style of offense that they need to play, and that is run the ball effectively, stay out of those trouble situations, and when you have to throw the ball down third long, those are tough to complete. Jason White, good protection, and again comes back to his tight end, James Moses. Moses, last year, just two receptions for 27 yards. Of course, Trent Smith, the big man here. Spencer and Casey make the tackle for UNT. I think Moses looks pretty athletic out there. Looks like he's going to be a big package, part of this package for the Sooners this year, catching the football. And I look for him to be able to use down the field as well. Looks like he's got pretty good speed. Throw the ball, good target. Looks like he's got pretty good hands. He and Jonathan Jackson were high school teammates at Houston North Shore. Can you imagine that pair in the same club? Third and six from the 30. White again to throw it. Overthrows Brandon Jones, who was open inside the 20-yard line on the near sideline. Walter Priestley was the man closest to him. Jason White took a little shot there at the end, but uh, he had a choice where to throw the football. He throws it outside, but he's got two or three people open in the middle of the field. And see the contact here after the play. You know, I think the other thing, uh, talking to some folks here at halftime, Gary, as we look at White move around. He doesn't show any tentativeness. And on a rainy, wet night, you thought, well, maybe he'll look a little bit safe. But no, he's he's looked great here so far. And I think that's just business. his mindset to come in here and play, play reckless man and take whatever happens. And, and he has performed pretty well. Calls a timeout here. Yeah, you anticipate it, but you never know until the real game start. And he has been impressive tonight. We'll be right back. Bill and Gary Reasons, John Radigan with you in Norman, Oklahoma, number one ranked Sooners. Going for it on fourth and six from the 30 of UNT here in the third quarter. White in trouble. Outruns one. Unloads, and it is complete. Wilson, he will score. Touchdown. A flag is thrown. Travis Wilson with a touchdown, but I think it's coming back. Now Brandon Kennedy had something to do with that. They had to contain him inside number 92 of Mean Green defense. Kind of held him, and that's what Jason White did. He rolled to his left side. And Pretty sure we're going to get a holding penalty against the Sooners. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, fourth down. Well, that was a good play by Jason White, scramble to making a play, make something happen. But, well, when you got a guy who's an impact player inside number 92, Kennedy, take a look at what happens to him right there. Little swim move over, and you can see here, just going to tackle him right there. Okay, just pull his legs out from under him. That's what they call it. You see the umpire there about to throw the flag, and Jason White scramble to the outside. Winds up making a good play here, but it's all for naught. You know, White, nice toss coming back against the body, though, with Wilson being tough to go up and get it. Travis Wilson is a nice surprise here for the Sooners coming in, making some nice grabs tonight. Fourth and 16, and as a result, they'll put it away with Blake Ferguson. High kick, because he'd like to down inside the 20. Won't be the case. It's the end zone, and will come back out. And North Texas survives the turnover and the 23 to nothing 
UNT will get the football back, 12-21 to go in the third quarter. This fall, the NFL returns to Fox. Bill Parcells comes to Dallas to return the Cowboys to glory. And Jeremy Shockey looks to repeat his outstanding rookie season and avoid the sophomore jinx. The biggest stories in the NFL are in the NFC. And the NFC is on Fox, returning September 7th. Look forward to seeing my old boss, Bill Parcells, get, uh, get in gear here with the Cowboys. Should be interesting to watch him this year. He has certainly made things interesting in the mm -hmm. Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex for the month of July and August, I'll tell you that. A lot of game being played. First and ten, and UNT keep it on the ground with Cobbs. Cobbs tripped up at the 21-yard line. Teddy Lehman making the tackle for the Sooners. You don't watch his Oklahoma defense. Kind of watch number 11 because he's normally going to be around the football at the end of the play. And Teddy Lehman made a lot of has made a lot of plays in his career here, a senior for this defense and one of the leaders out there. I think one of the best linebackers in college football. When you combine his speed, Bill, and the size that he has, he's about 6'3 and 240. Yeah, that's a pretty good pack. Second down and nine at the 21 yard line. As the All American Layman made the stop that time. UNT with Drew Smith calling the shots here. Cobbs avoids one and then cuts it up near the 30 and then is brought down. It'll be third and short. Momentum stopped just shy of the 29 yard line. Well, Cobb shows that he's got a you know, pretty good power of running back and running through arm tackles, getting some extra yardage. Going to need that here as the season goes on for the mean green and getting that against a pretty tough defense. Cobb showing he's got some ability. Straight Nicholson with there to make the tackle. Cobb's last year, eight touchdowns on the ground, caught seven passes for 34 yards. As a freshman, he ran for 399. This is a makeable third down situation. North Texas really needs to get one of those. Third and two from the 28. Give it to Cobbs again. Oklahoma defense comes up to close in, but it appears he is across the 30-yard line and has the first down for the Mean Green, their fourth first down of the night. Sometimes you have to build on small things, get that first down here. Take a look at Teddy Lehman, the linebacker, scraping across, trying to make a play right on Trevor Cobbs, makes the hit. Cobbs break, break, comes back inside, and good job that time by the running back, but Teddy Lehman sure made a nice tackle on the play. Just, uh, didn't hold him for the first down. Harris also there for... Oklahoma. First to 10 at the 30. Branch in motion. Smith on the option. Cobbs, no way, as he is hit by Straight for a loss on the play. Derek Straight, what about to be fooled? Well, there's a relationship that you have to have when you do the option game that wasn't what you want. You had Cobbs actually going backwards as he caught the ball instead of progressing towards the line of scrimmage on the pitch. Take a look here as Smith comes down the line. He goes and watch him pick, pitch it back and deep. And then the defense with the speed that they have, you see Cobbs having to go back and away from it. Derek Straight coming up, making a nice tackle in the backfield. Makes it second and 19 now for the Mean Green as they're going backwards here. On the 21, Smith in trouble again, and he is sacked on the play. Dan Cody and crew. Well, Dan Cody, Bill, is 6'5", 270 pounds, and I'm telling you, the young man has a motor. He came around that right defensive end, got around very quickly, and just motored right to the quarterback who didn't have a chance. Look on the right side of your screen. Watch Cody. Watch him wind it up and get the wheels going here and hit the quarterback. Good job that time on the speed rush. Boy, speed is the term, too, is it not, with this Oklahoma defense? That, that's amazing speed for a guy that size. 6'5", 270. I think he's got a little room to grow, too, don't you, what do you think? Junior from 8 Oklahoma. And it's now third and 27. The ball on the 13. Shame they don't love their Sooners here, isn't it? Get serious, folks. Come on now. Oklahoma with a 23 to nothing lead. Nation's number one team living up to the billing. 23 nothing. University of Oklahoma over North Texas here in the third quarter. The Dr. Pepper Heisman watch. Here's some Big 12 candidates, Gary, and that's a pretty good group. Well, I'll talk about Teddy Lehman as a linebacker. That's an outside shot, but Rashawn Woods, wide receiver, wide receiver Roy, Roy Williams from Texas. Those two are the, some of the best in the country. And I think L. Roberson will tell you the performance he had in the first ball game shows that he's a top performer and has an outside shot at the, the Heisman as well. Third and 27, and this one almost picked off by McCoy again. 
and North Texas will have to kick it away. And the other thing, and I know folks are looking out, they're going, wait a minute, what about this guy? What about that guy? Kansas State, you could say, what about Darrell Sproles? To me, the counterpoint is Roberson can throw it and run it, and the quarterback is obviously going to get more attention in a Heisman battle. In fact, those two will probably split the vote that might be coming to that spot. To be perfectly honest with you, we just can only put four on the screen. So <laughs> we, we had four names to go with, and we did that. There's a lot of players that have that potential here in the Big 12, and uh, a lot of great players across the country as well. The punt comes to Perkins at the 50, dances away from another 45, and Perkins forges his head to the 38-yard line of North Texas. A 43-yard punt, a 15-yard return from the veteran Perkins. Sooners operating in great passion again. Oklahoma 23-0 over North Texas, and time for our Microsoft trivia question. Whose freshman touchdown record did Kiwan Jones break last year? The then freshman from Jenks, Oklahoma, had 14. Think about that one for him. That's freshman here at the University of Oklahoma, folks. So yes. well, let's take a look at that. First and 10 for Oklahoma after the punt, and Travis Wilson dives across what appears to be first down. Let's see if they mark it. He brought down near the 30. Be a little short, it appears. I like Travis Wilson. Yeah. He's getting the ball, moving up the field. Shows that Jason White's happy to go with him. Good blocking up front there. Your big tight end doing a good job there. And it's a nice slip screen pass. Big play in college football. And Wilson showing, hey, I'll take that pass out there. Wilson was a teammate in high school of DiCarlo. The kicker's got three field goals tonight. They both played at Carrollton Creekview. And Travis, we saw him last year with a touchdown against Texas El Paso here. And there's Big Booger inside. <laughs> Trying to run inside there, and that's not easy to do. Brandon Kennedy gets off the block and makes a quick tackle, tackle for loss, which he does well. Just splits the, the down block right there and gets in the backfield. The right guard does, really doesn't have a chance to get him. And uh, that's a good play that time. Joseph, the big right guard, is all he can handle there with uh, Brandon Kennedy. Don't you say if he were 6-3, he'd be an instant first-round NFL pick. As it is now, he's going to get drafted and get a chance to play. But I think there will still be some prejudice because of the size and the height. You bring up guys like Jerry Ball. There's been some big guys that are not so tall in stature that can play really well the defensive line. They're at a premium when you get big, good defensive linemen. That's one of the things that defensive coordinators and head coaches like to build their defense around. Good defensive linemen and cornerbacks and kind of other things can fill in. But Brandon Kennedy has shown that uh, he can make some plays. So, Bill, he is going to get a look. Brandon Jones made the reception that time at Oklahoma. Now with 7-13 and counting in the third quarter. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Sooners let it 10 nothing after the first quarter, 23 nothing at the break. Looking for more here is White. Short drop, looking to go to Wilson, and it is almost intercepted. Coming in the play, Jeremy Pearl. Pearl does a good job, stays at the outside, just keeps the receiver inside of him, Travis Wilson, and Jason White trying to toss the corner out right there in the safety bracket him, and that's a good job by the defense. No play action fake, but it was a play action pass and throws it out there. Jeremy Pearl just he almost makes the catch himself. Second and 10 at the 27. White with a pair of TD passes already. This one he hands off to Kiwan Jones, and Jones cuts it up and then goes outside and gets to near the 15 yard line. You know, what the coaches are going to really like about that play is how he was patient. He set up that run, Bill. He got in behind his pulling guard, and what he did was got in there. Watch him here. You see the right guard pull in front of him there, and that's going to be Davin Joseph. And he's not pulling up inside there, but he's waiting for the big guy to get onto somebody, which he does, and kind of loses his footing there. But the man does a nice job of setting it up and getting a good run. Oklahoma. Knocking on the door again and want the touchdown instead of the field goal this time. And again, they feed the ball to Kiwan Jones. And picks up a couple. Second and eight at the 13 coming up now for OU. And just keep pounding and keep running it. I talked about at halftime the stats that they had in the first half, mostly slanted towards the passing game. But they want to establish that running game here. They want to get balanced. Their offense, it showed at the beginning of the football game that the, how balanced they are running the football and passing it. They want to create that. So over the course of the football game, they like for those things to even out. Second and eight. White 
Across the middle, Travis Wilson, touchdown! Oklahoma! 13-yard TD pass, third of the night for Jason White. Well, I think all the misdirection that there was on that play confused the North Texas defense. A little inside counter play fake and coming across, and Jason White, instead of rolling, just stops in the backfield and finds Travis Wilson coming around, who finds an opening in the middle, and he normally would have continued across the field on that play, but he stops in the middle between the safeties, and you see Jason White find him there. Good job of finding a hole and just sticking it in the end zone. So DiCarlo, perfect on the night, PAT and field goal-wise, stays that way as he hits this one, and the Sooners get the First TD of the second half, and now tack it up to a 30 to nothing mark. Oklahoma, 30, North Texas, zero. Well, here's your guy gonna come across here. That's gonna be Wilson. Quarterback just waiting for him to come inside there, and that's a nice spot to open up on and just throws it in there nicely, and that's an easy touchdown. The misdirection confused North Texas defense. So, Travis Wilson with the TD and the Microsoft trivia question we had was the 14 touchdowns by a freshman. What did you, your who record? Did you Who did you think, Bill? What do you think? I was going back thinking possibly with Spencer Tillman. Spencer Tillman, Marcus Dupree. Hey, there you go. Marcus Dupree, 13 in 1982. Pretty good Boy. numbers, pretty good company to be in. What a player and just what a story when Marcus Dupree came here. I was living in Oklahoma then. What a talent, isn't it? Just a shame that uh, ruined his knees. Guy would have been a big star in the NFL. Oklahoma with a 30 to nothing lead and 5.52 to go in the third. Trey DiCarlo is getting a workout. Quite a few kickoffs and field goals, the extra points. And DiCarlo, and it did give it the leg again. Normally, Jamel Brand would be back, back on kick returns, but they brought him into the uh, locker room, Bill, just after that last series for North Texas on offense and taking care of him. Looked like he might have had some cramps. Yeah, I think Muzzy will replace him, did on the kickoff return. And hopefully, Branch will be all right. Let's take a look at the Nissan scoring drive here for the Sooners, the first score of the Second half, seven plays, 39 yards, and Wilson, 13 yards on the TD pass. Travis gets his first score of the year, and White, three of four on the drive for 27 yards, and he's thrown for three TDs now. Well, this defense, you see most of the starters still out there for, for Oklahoma. They're gonna play and play a lot. They want this defense to be sharp. First to 10 from the 20. Smith, the quarterback again for the Mean Green. Cobbs upended at the line of scrimmage. Now, Oklahoma, you talk about it. Here's a number one team in the country, Gary, and in the conference that is considered, I think, the best in the, in the nation. And then you take a look at their non-conference slate with North Texas at Alabama, Fresno State here, and UCLA. This team goes from wire to wire and ends up number one. They will have earned it. That's right, and Rodney Poole, number 23, the new uh, one of the newcomers of this defense, doing a good job at the free safety spot. They play a lot of people towards the line of scrimmage, and they need Rodney Poole to step up there and play. We haven't talked about Dante Nicholson, who's one of their uh, young men who came in as a junior college transfer this year, number eight, and he's playing strong safety for him. He's been out there in the thick of things, hadn't made a lot of key plays, but uh, Dante Nicholson, they're looking at him, and they say he's got some awesome ability, and they really like him. Yeah, look forward to seeing what he can do for the Sooners. Mount San Antonio Junior College out of the California Juco ranks that last year brought him Mitchell and Jackson. Smith scrambling and then Sandwich did a good job just protecting the football, but uh, didn't pick up much. Got it around the 21 22 yard line. Talking about that schedule, and Bob Stoops and the Sooners not shying away from anybody. No, Next up at Alabama. That's a good matchup there. That's going to be one that's going to really test this Sooner bunch and test them early. Coaching change there. I don't think that's going to change Alabama a whole lot. They're still a good quality football team, and, and they've got Fresno and UCLA here at Memorial Stadium. Should be a Good four games to start this season before they get into the Big 12 slate. Third and nine, ball on the 21. Smith out of the gun. And it is incomplete. Derek Strait covering on the play. Johnny Quinn, the intended receiver there. Make sure freshman. 
432 remaining in the third. And that'll bring on Red Candlebar for the punting chores once again. Candlebar, junior from Ennis, Texas. Average 42 yards a kick last year, second in the Sun Belt Conference. He sees it 41 here tonight. Good turn here, Bill. Ball then just looked like it was going to be for Perkins, and then it was dead. And I don't know if Bradley touched it, but if he did, UNT pounced on it. And I think one of the player's feet in the back of his heel, and I'm not sure if that was a North Texas player or it was Mark Bradley who the North Texas players are claiming that that ball went off of him. And Baldwin is the one that they came up and recovered a 33 yard punt. Daryl Dickey likes something to go his way. Daryl Dickey's going. Take a look here. You see the ball bouncing around. It, there's right there. Oh, good. That I was think a, they're claiming he was blocked into the ball, knocked into him. And, and so, Daryl Dickey's saying it doesn't matter. You know, that's a complete interpretation here. And it, the officials are interpreting that uh, you know, he didn't make a play on the ball and he was knocked back into it. And, it's not going to go that way for North Texas. I still don't understand that not returning it. Why anywhere near it? And Bradley fortunate there. Rustin Beck is the one that put the block on him. But Oklahoma will get the football back. So it's first and 10 at the 42 yard line of the Sooners. Kiwan Jones the handoff and Jones. Good tough run as he spins up across the 45 out to the 49 yard line. And you got Jason White in the ball game. And I think he's done a really good job so far tonight. Bill, one of the question marks about Jason is his durability and how well and how long he's going to be able to play. The number two quarterback, Paul Thompson, has got some ability. 6'4 guy and in his own right. We saw him play a little bit sporadically, but just a sophomore. And so there's some concerns about the quarterback spot. So I think they're probably going to get Paul Thompson in the game here before long with a pretty comfortable lead on, the, on the North Texas. Second and three from the 49 yard line. And then they feed it on the ground here. Well, the thing, too, is Bob Stoops uh, during his weekly news conference, and boy, there was a horde of media here as Heard makes the tackle on this one, was asked about how concerned are you going to get Thompson's playing time. And he said, understand, Jason White's my quarterback, right? We're going to win the game. We do what we want. But yeah, we all got, know you've got, got to develop somebody else. And Thompson last year, in the brief time that he played, we saw him. They are really excited about uh, his abilities. And they made the decision at the end of spring practice to name White the starter, and he came back knowing it. But that doesn't mean any reflection on Thompson being any lesser of a player. I am sure that uh, we'll see him get some action here tonight if he continues like this. White wants another TD pass, though, right now, looking for Brandon Jones and overthrown. Pretty good ball that time by White. I tell you, that ball sailed 55 yards easily. Not a whole lot of effort in that to throw that football. I think quarterbacks love this offense. It's a spread offense. They're able to do the, get the running game going, the play action. You throw the ball sideline to sideline. Josh Heupel, they took this offense to a national championship in the year 2000, and I think they'd like to have Jason White lead them to that again this season. No doubt about that. And look at his numbers on the night. Pretty impressive. The three touchdowns and over 200 yards passing, and pretty good completion percentage. Oklahoma 76 yards on the ground. They have taken what North Texas has offered. Certainly the case. Second and 10 at the 47 of the Mean Green. White rolls out this time, and it is incomplete as J.D. Runnels, the fullback. Could quite come up with it. He's a sophomore from nearby Midwest City, Oklahoma. You know, I mentioned Josh Eiple. He actually joined the, the OU staff this year as a graduate assistant, working the, with a the bunch, working with the offensive line, the special teams, and they think he's doing an excellent job, and they think that he might be a, an excellent coach down the road. Yeah, isn't it interesting that uh, Heupel here and tomorrow night, Fox Sports Net viewers, you'll see Texas uh, take its number five rankings from Mexico State, and a guy named Applewhite is yeah. an assistant coach on Mac Brown's staff down there, and he too involved with the offensive line. It's a good place to learn. You learn a lot of things and work with a lot of guys. And uh, certainly that's a position that has a lot of folks that need the help. Team timeout. Timeout. There. timeout is called on the field with 312 to go in the third quarter. Jason White. Couldn't ask for much more in his initial performance coming back from the knee surgery. Yeah, this is a good first opening quarter touchdown pass to Rankins, who does a good job of pushing off and coming back. And Jason White showing he can throw the ball down the field as well. Good strike here inside the hash mark. And excellent job of throwing the football. That's an exciting play for him and good for him to get back into the game. And then the zip here to Wilson. Good read there. He can stop. He can start. Looks like that uh, Jason White has everything going for him that he needs to to 
to excel at that quarterback spot. Yeah, and it, you know, it's, it's one thing to just sit here and say, well, he had ACL, then he sat out, and came back, rehab last year, two games, ACL comes back. I don't know if people really understand the work ethic that it requires to know that all right, I went through this once and I'm going to do it again yeah. and to come back and play with the confidence that he's played and it's like he's never missed a beat, Gary. Yeah, my son went through it last year. A high school player got injured in the second week of the high school season. It's taken him an entire year. He's playing college ball now, but he's still really not ready to play. There's a fatigue factor in the knees and that's the thing that Jason White, I asked, I asked one of the coaches when we were talking to him this week, as he, was he better prepared to take on this second injury they say by far yes because he knew what he had to do to, to get that knee ready to play and he's done that in, in a pretty pretty good amount of time really it's been really two years since he's had contact and uh, he's experienced yeah he's he experienced experience. how, how to get back and <laughs> I tell you I'm, I'm really happy for him to get back and play so well the experience is everything even in injuries third and ten and white dumps this one off incomplete intended for Kiwan Jones Kennedy had the pressure put on him that time surprise surprise Brandon Kennedy still making an impact here and this young man is gonna play here Jason white little ginger walking off the field after big bogey here, a little slap oh. uppercut. Well, he's quick. I'm telling you, he's quick. I'm not sure the center even knew that he was coming around. I, maybe he thought he had some help, but Chris uh, Bush is the center. Whoops. Cripps, uh, Chris, you know, he's in front of you. You got to block him somehow, some way. You got to put something on him. Jason's saying, come on, guys. This one rolls dead inside the one yard line. Wow. So Ferguson does the job. The 46 yard punt, and North Texas. We'll have to go 99 for TD. Now, which quarterback are they going to put out there? Going to come back probably. Well, what was you telling the story about how they really are even, and both quarterbacks have experience for North Texas. And you didn't complete it though. That Daryl Dickey said, "Try and flip a coin. You guys both played even." He said, "Call it." And I can't remember if it was Hall or. Whoever won the toss, I think it was Hall, said, Coach, can I defer? Yeah, well, really, <laughs> my point is, does which one of them wants to come out and have this experience yes. on the one-yard line? Well, I guess if I you defer, defer that defense. means you get your choice down. Right? <laughs> so, that Sooner crowd wakes up now with a comfortable 30-0 lead. they like a safety tagged on. And coming out with it, North Texas. Nice run to get some breathing room out of the end zone by Bishop. And Roy Bishop, the sophomore from San Angelo, Texas, Last year, 10 carries, 62 yards. His first carry here tonight. A well, good and job of picking his spots yeah. here. The North Texas team does a good job wrapping up on people. You keep the linebackers inside, just find an opening to the outside. And there's Branch back in the game, which is good for the North Texas team, getting the block on the outside. Hey, that's the way to get out of an end zone. A good running play with a hat on a hat and block and let your running backs get some good yardage for you. Bishop, the lone back. Branch and Thrash wide to the near side. Out of the shotgun now is Smith. Bishop tackled for a loss on the play this time. Lance Mitchell making the stop for Oklahoma. Flags flying everywhere, Bill. We're going to have some unsportsmanlike conduct on the field, unfortunately. But both of these coaches are real disciplined coaches. When things like this happen on the field, it's uh, they, they really don't like those kind of things. After the play, dead ball, personal foul on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Mm. Well, you can see the fire in his eyes talking to his players. That's that's not something he's going to stand for. And there's going to be a there's a discussion here, and then there's going to be another discussion and many more discussions to his football team about penalties like that. And you just can't do that to your football team. You ever wonder if Bob Stoops has determination in a the way about things and communicating with his players. Just look at him right there and see how animated he is. And here he is ahead in this football game, commanding, but still very focused on that game and doesn't like to see his players make mistakes of that nature. First to 10 at the 32. Smith gives it off again to Bishop. Bishop dives across the 30, back to the line of scrimmage, and Derek Strait making the tackle. Not only can Derek Strait cover very well outside, he's a good man-to-man -man cover guy, but he's come up and made some nice tackles in the backfield here. He's got what I call a closed corner position here. He has contained on the outside. No wide receivers, but he comes up and makes a good tackle in the backfield, diving underneath, a la the old uh, Deion Sanders move. I, like, I don't really like those kind of tackles, but uh, Derek Strait can make them. Straight 68 tackles last year to go along with his six interceptions in his all Big 12 season. 
Second down and 11 from the 31 for the Eagles of North Texas. Bishop. Couple to the 32. And Mitchell and Lehman are there. North Texas defense bill, they're, they're out there with speed, ability, athleticism. And they crowd the line of scrimmage. They're going to get a lot of people around the ball. So they're going to force you to throw it. And they're going to they're going to crowd the line of scrimmage and stop the run. They're going to force you to throw it outside. And they expect their receive their defensive backs and cornerbacks to cover and cover well. And they'll bring pressure on any down. There's no pattern for what they do defensively. Mike Stoops and Brent Venables, they put in a real good system here. And they utilize the skills that their players have. Third and nine at the 33 for North Texas. Smith. Under pressure again and brought down, it's Cody. Well, Cody's got that speed rush figured up, figured out on the outside there. Good job on the right side coming around and rubbing it tight. What I mean by rubbing it tight is you get as close to the offensive line as you can stay. Don't give up any space, and that's exactly what Dan Cody does on the top. Watch here as Smith just kind of sets up, and Dan Cody's just going around, keeping it tight. Doing a good job of just tracking him down, and big guy with speed's going to make a lot of plays. Dan Cody, back up last year with 16 tackles, five for loss. His freshman year, a medical red shirt in 01. He started the North Carolina game and then went away. Boy, has he come back in strong fashion here. We played three quarters in Norman. It's all Sooners, 30 to nothing. Sooners, as we go to the fourth, rolling 30 to nothing. The number one ranked team blanking University of North Texas. College football presented by Kiyosera returns to Fox Sports Net tomorrow night. Fifth ranked Texas will get its season start against the Ags in New Mexico State. College football continues tomorrow. That's right here on Fox Sports Net. New Mexico State at number five, Texas, six o'clock central, seven o'clock Eastern. And then see Chance Mock step on the field for the Longhorns, a quarterback. Yeah, some big names are gone in the Big 12, but some great players who have just not gotten the opportunity are about to take the stage now. Fourth and 20, and ball kicked away. Perkins from his own 25. Spins across the 40 to the 41-yard line. And a 53-yard punt, a 17-yard return for Perkins of Oklahoma. Perkins has done a pretty good job on punt yeah. returns now. You know, haven't seen a lot of it, but what he does, he runs north and south, and coaches talk about that. You don't want to go east and west. He's definitely a north and south guy, trying to get extra yards, spin through, and make plays, and just having fun out there. Well, last year, three touchdowns on returns, 91 yards against Tulsa. He had one against the uh, Rose Bowl of 51 yards against Washington State. He is electric when he's back there. The defense or on the kick return game. And the toss by White is complete out to the 48-yard line, and this one, Brandon Jones, who had a touchdown pass earlier. And he picks up seven, it'll be second and three, the ball at the 48-yard line. Brandon, a junior from Texarkana, Texas. Last year, nine receptions for 133 yards and three TDs. Jones. As the first down as he moves toward the 46 yard line of the mean green. Casey and Craig Jones make the tackle for UNT. On the right side there, David Joseph, the right guard, and Jamal Brown, number 55, just showing that they can push the pile, which is what they did there. Just took the both the right defensive end and the right tackle and defensive tackle. And they pushed them down the line of scrimmage and pushed them back and take your tail back. So, hey, just find a hole, run behind us, and that's what they did for the first down. First and 10 at the 46, and White completes this one to Jones, and Jones inside the 35-yard line and a first down. Now just shy of that, but he got the first down, it appears. Good job that time by the offense, Bill. A quarterback standing back there with a chance to throw the football. This offensive line steps up. Nobody got into the into Jason White's face. Look at the offensive line here, the protection. They pop up. Everybody's man on man here. Brandon Kenny took the playoff. I guess he had coverage on one of the running backs. He didn't rush at all. Offensive lineman kind of like that when Brandon doesn't rush. Might be a little tired out there. Second and one. Kewan Jones 
Jones trying to break a tackle at the 30-yard line and brought down there, but a good hard run by the sophomore. And it's a first and 10 Oklahoma as Craig Jones makes the tackle. And if we get in the fourth quarter here, Gary, we mentioned Alabama next for Oklahoma. You got to put these guys under the gun, and it's not just a matter of playing them a couple quarters and then getting everybody in the game tonight, is it? That's exactly right. Look at the big tight end making the block, and then Brand Brandon Jones out there making a the block also. So Jones and Jones and Jones, one for the defense, two for the offense, getting the work done. Next week, Oklahoma travels to Alabama to meet Crimson Tide, and they took care of South Florida today after an early scare. They won big against South Florida, 40 to 17. So Jason White, a guy who's a fifth-year senior, but relatively inexperienced for a fifth-year senior. So you want him to develop some consistency and a real feel for your offense, right? And this is the best chance that they're able to do that. You know, you don't have you know, preseason games like the NFL. You have games like this that are non-conference that you have to go out and you want to win every single game. If you want to have a chance to win a national championship, as Bob Stoops and company do, they have to win, and they, they know they're going to get a test next time out against Alabama. Second down and 10. White on the shotgun. Travis Wilson. Wilson looking for a block from Jones, who had already fallen, and gets out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Clock still moving at 12.44, counting here in the fourth quarter. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, along with the up front here, and Nolton helped knock him out of bounds on that play. John Radigan, our sideline man tonight on a retro night in Oklahoma with the uniforms. If you just tuned in, go, wait a minute, is that a new look from Oklahoma? No, it's an old look. That's what they wore in the Bud Wilkinson days back in the 50s. And cheerleaders in 40s outfits, and Joe Castiglione, the athletic director, dressed as Bud. It's been uh, quite a night here, and the coaches in the 70s garb from the Switzer. This pass is complete. But not much doing as Kiwan Jones lost his shoe as well. Tackle to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Casey Tedder makes a good play on the screen play. Trying to get Kiwan out there and set that up. But Casey, Casey Tedder, we talked about at the top of the show, is one of the better linebackers in the Sun Belt Conference. Does a nice job there. Look at Jason White's numbers for tonight, Bill. Key thing here is no mistakes. No interceptions, three touchdowns, and good yardage, good completion percentage. I'll tell you, this is a real confidence builder for him and for this football team. Well, they said he just got better and better every day in practice, and Bob Stoops uh, not easy to please, but very happy at halftime when he talked to John Radigan and certainly hadn't seen anything to discourage him, I would guess, here in the second half of his performance. Fourth down and eight. White. And it is picked off. He was going down, and as he was, he unloaded, and Jonas Buckles came up with it as White was hit hard. Now he tried to, what I call, arm this ball. He had somebody on his feet, so he couldn't step into the throw to really deliver it with the velocity that he wanted to, but he knew he had a receiver down there. Watch the defensive pressure. Watch him get to the feet here. Try to grab him, and he's going down, so he arms the ball and just can't make the play. It's a good job of rush there that time by the defense. And Devin Cardwell getting in there on Jason White. Wassum also there on the pressure, so Oklahoma. Give it up on downs. First to 10 on the 17. We're down a moment to John Radigan, who's got former Oklahoma great. One time athletic director here as well, Steve Owens with him. They brought back the other part of this night. The first team All Americans were all invited back, and a slew of them are here tonight that have enjoyed the weekend. Handoff to Bishop, and gets a couple down near the 19 yard line. Let's go down to John. Hey, thank you, Bill. We are here with Steve Owens. Steve Owens won the Heisman Trophy here in 1969. There have been 131 All-Americans at Oklahoma. Steve Owens is one of those, and uh, nice to see a bunch of them back here tonight, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, John, we had a great group back. We had 40 All-Americans here last night, and I think almost 50 today. And last night it was great to be with Billy Sims and Eddie Crowder and just numerous All-Americans, guys that I watched when I wanted to become a Sooner and guys I watched after I left OU. But, uh, it's been a great weekend, been a great time. It's great to be here with the Sooners and get this all back together. Well, and they're doing the whole retro thing where they really celebrate the different eras of excellence. It's amazing when you sort of stop and look at it all by era. There has been excellence almost across the board here. Well, it really has. Started back with Bud Wilkinson when, you know, when he had his, his great teams here and went through the Barry Switzer era, and now we're in the Bob Stoops era. And this is our third era, but uh, you know, you look back at our history of what we've done in college football, it's really tremendous. I'm just very 
uh, happy and pleased to be a part of that. Who do you figure told the most lies last night? <laughs> so, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Who do you figure told the most lies last night when they were well, telling? I think the, I think the older guys have a tendency to lie, boys. So I think it was Buddy Burris and one of those guys that probably told the most lies. But it was really good to see everybody. It was great for Joe and Stigley only and the L.A. Department to have us back. It's been a lot of fun. Great to talk to you, Steve. We appreciate it. Steve Owens, Heisman Trophy winner from 1969. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you very much, John. Well, Hall has come back on as the quarterback. He completed the pass to Quinn, and now he finds Bishop here, and Bishop makes a nice run down to the 33-yard line of Oklahoma, and a big hit by the, I think Gardner. Ooh, that's the one that made the hit that sprung it. Well, that's a good job here by North Texas, putting a couple of plays together. And, you know, one comment, Bill, about our, our sideline reporter up in the, the luxury suites. He's having fun up there with it. John, you, uh, it's a new king everybody's going to want. I want the suites reporter. Get that. That's it. That's the suites reporter. Sidelines on nice nights. Green, give me the suites. First to 10 at the 33 is UNT trying to break that shutout. And this one incomplete as the hit by Teddy Lehman. Well, Scott Hall got a couple of passes to get this offense now rolling and trying to get some more here, trying to get something up on the board against his Sooner defense. North Texas, a ball club that Daryl Dickey last year saw come out and go eight and five and asked him why. Is that translating an enthusiasm at UNT, a, a big school, but largely commuter at North Texas? And he goes, well, they used to be buying, you see kids wearing Texas Tech and Texas stuff on campus. Now at least they're buying some UNT stuff. So he said, we got a ways to go, but people are proud of our team now. Good touch pass right there. Good job of going in the void of the defense, behind the cornerback and in front of the safety. Scott Hall lobbed that in when they're very nicely, and that's kind of a feel-good play for him to get going. Johnny Quinn gets out on the outside and slows down. Take a look here, Quinn. You got the, the five across here, and here's a safety. He's going to lob it in right back under here. Johnny Quinn is going to settle down, get missed the jam on him. The cornerback has to find that, the void between the secondary, the safety in the corner. That's a nice touch pass by, Jeff, by Scott Hall. Junior from Fritz, Texas, has got him marching now. They're at the 16-yard line. They got down close one other time, and Oklahoma's crowd got into it, and the defense just stuffed them. And a timeout is called here with a first and 10 at the 16. They don't want to lose the shutout here at Oklahoma. 30 to nothing. We'll be right back on Fox Sports Net. Here's our Gillette Sensor game summary. The Sooners up 30 0. Jason White with a career high three TD passes. Total yards, two, 117 to 328 for Oklahoma. And now it's first to 10 to 16 for the Mean Green. Branch in motion. Hall, the quarterback, to Branch. Ran out of real estate. Well, Jamel Branch may be one of the fastest players, if not the fastest player for North Texas, but look at the Sooners' defense and how well they respond to the football, just taking angles and doing a good job of tracking them down on the, the pitch option there. Perkins and Poole covering on the play. Look at the defense here. Watch the speed on the outside here. You think that Jamel Branch can win the corner? No, not going to happen. you got too many Sooners out there with speed to come up and get him. It's a good job there coming up. Make a nice play. That's on Tony Perkins, yeah. yeah. Mitchell finished him off. Second 11 at the 17 now. And the shotgun for Hall. They come after him and the pass is dropped. He had the play set up, a little slip screen there to the back of Jason. Excuse me, Scott Hall was under duress and he couldn't set and deliver the football the way he wanted to. Good pressure up the field on the little slip screen. Jonathan Jackson in his face. Well, better late than never. Well, UNT you, trying to make something happen here. Well, you take whatever you can get. You just try to produce, and that's what uh, Scott Hall's doing here. A couple of good Dead plays ball. to get down there. Personal foul on the defense. Dead ball. Personal That'll help. foul on the offense. Those penalties by rule offset. Nope. Third down. Okay, both ways. And you, know, you talk about North Texas at this point. This is team showing a sign that won a championship last year and not just folding its tent because they know this is the start of a long haul for them and they want to get back in the bowl business again and get to the Sun Belt. And you get a chance to punch one in in front of 80,000 here. It'll be a builder for the squad. Third 11 of the 17.
Incomplete, nearly picked off. Intended for 81, Johnny Quinn, but Nicholson nearly had his first Oklahoma interception. Just a touch tall that time, or high that time for Johnny Quinn coming across on the quick slant. Scott Hall sets and throws inside, trying to get in there in front of Nicholson. Ball sailed a little bit on him and just didn't make a play, and Nicholson adjusts pretty well. Almost got the pick right to so good. Gonna put some points on the board, possibly the fourth down field goal attempt. And a 34-yard attempt coming up here for North Texas being green. As will do it, and it is good as UNT gets on the board. It's 30 to 3 with 9.03 to play. Welcome back, it's 33, 32-3, I should say, University of Oklahoma or North Texas. And the scoring drive here for UNT, their most impressive effort of the night, not just the fact that they scored, but they get the field goal and they had to go a distance to get it as Bazadua, 34-yard field goal after nine plays, 66 yards, took two minutes and 18 seconds, and they are on the board. We have to take a timeout here to Get things lined up. I you know, barely think he may decide to even go for an onside kick here. You never know. Crazier things have happened. Nine minutes to go in this game, but you know, you're down I mean, three scores. Three four scores, you gotta get up there and, and do something. Well, this fall the NFL returns to Fox. And one of the big stories, of course, Bill Parcells hopes to return the Cowboys to glory in Dallas and Jeremy Shockey. Looks to repeat his outstanding rookie season, avoid the sophomore jinx, and not talk about it. The biggest stories in the NFL are the NFC, and the NFC is on Fox, returning September 7th. How long do you think he'll keep quiet? Which one? Parcells, he always talks. Well, Shockey, Jeremy Shockey I don't talks, know. too. <laughs> he always talks. No matter what he's told. He is an Oklahoman, if you didn't know it. Then we went to the University of Miami down in Florida. There's one word about him that uh, he has tenacity. You know, he likes to play, and he's a fiery guy. He's loud on and off the field. Yeah, he? yeah, he draws a crowd. You know, he's also a heck of a player. Oklahoma with a 30 to 3 lead here. We mentioned Oklahoma meets Alabama next weekend down in uh, Dixie, and Alabama 40 to 17 win over South Alabama. And North Texas has Baylor coming to Fouts Field in Denton, and Baylor's got a doozy for its opener tonight. Alabama Birmingham is beating Baylor 17-14 that game in the fourth in the wake up. A little pooch kick here trying to get it behind the front line and make a play. And Perkins trying to escape the crowd and he runs out of bounds with it. He is slippery. And Oklahoma will have good field position. Well, the crowd tonight, a brand new record. 83,073 here at Oklahoma and the Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium attendance record, the largest crowd to ever see a football game in the state of Oklahoma. And what a tribute. 8,000 new seats, the suites that John Radigan's been showing you tonight, and the renovations that have been done. Huge success. The crowd enjoying it. 71,000 season tickets sold and a 10,000 waiting list. Paul Thompson is on to replace Jason White. White. Terrific performance. Here's the sophomore from Leander, Texas, to get his shot at running the show. Hands it off on the first down carry. And not much happened on that one. All at the 44-yard line for the line of scrimmage. And carrying it, Dante Hickson gets his first carry before Taylor Casey makes the tackle. Well, good to see Paul Thompson in the game. We talked about him earlier that, you know, he needs to get some reps. He needs to get some experience out there on the field. Chance to go here the last part of this fourth quarter to lead this Oklahoma team. Against a pretty good bunch. Now, I'll tell you, North Texas is really not a bad defense. They're one of the top ten defenses in the country overall last year, and you know, they've stood and they have eight returning starters, so they're a good football team. Yeah, a team that played a murderous schedule, yet only allowed 19. Hold on just a second here, as they only allowed 14.8 points per game as a defensive unit. You see Paul Thompson's escapability there. Ducks under the tackle and scoots out. The crowd really getting excited here about him. Watch him here. Oh, there's Brandon Kennedy. Look out. <laughs> there he goes. Gets a few extra yards. Third down and six. Glad to have Fox Sports Ohio join us here with Norman. Sooners rolling. Number one ranked Oklahoma 30, North Texas 3. Fourth quarter, 7.44 to go. I'm Bill Land alongside Gary Reasons. John Radican working the sidelines tonight. Paul Thompson throws the pass, and it is complete. 
And for a first down for the Sooners is Brandon Jones, who's well over the 100-yard mark tonight, makes the reception. Priestley makes the tackle. Well, Paul Thompson, when you talk to Chuck Long about him, he says two things come to mind. Big time release, Gary. Thinks he's got as quick a release as anybody in college football, and he's got legs. We've already seen both those tonight. Well, he throws the ball, throws it on a dart. That's not an easy pass, that quick little slant there. You got a linebacker dropping out underneath, and you got a corner behind it. He zings it in there pretty well, and that's timing, that's execution. He does have some of the things you talk about, Bill. He can run the football, and I just got to have game experience, and I think he's got a pretty good release, as the coach was talking about. Extremely intelligent. Last year, 12 and 20 for 95 yards, an interception and two scores. He wants six right here. This one landed out there and couldn't connect. A very valuable playing time for him with 7.06 to go in the fourth quarter. And Brandon Jones, we mentioned, eight receptions for 111 yards tonight to lead the Sooner receivers. Eight catches, that's a pretty good night. One more for Jones, and he'll match his season total from last year. Second and 10 at the 42. Thompson to throw it, and it is to Rankin. Rankin, touchdown earlier tonight, and Juwan Rankins takes it down to the 32-yard line, and Brandon Kennedy is the one that came up hurt on that play, I think, as he made the stop. Hoblin a bit. Good execution here on the wide receiver screen. Paul Thompson faking to his right, throws it out to Juwan. You see the blocks here on the outside. Just get in behind the big guys now and make you play. And red shirts blocking pretty well, getting a first down on that play. Rankins had a touchdown catch early in the ball game. This is work tonight. Jason White, for those that had not uh, been with us for the entire night, very impressive after coming back from back-to-back -back knee surgeries in the last two years. With Career high three touchdown passes. One interception, but it was one of the game that really didn't matter. He ran into Booger. <laughs> you see that? Dante Kennedy. Hickson, yeah. yeah. He's not hurt. No, he's, he's, oh, I can still lay a little wood out there. That's good. I'll go down the line of scrimmage and bingo. Watch big 92 here coming down the line. Big Dante Hickson and Kabing. No, nose tackle being able to get down the line of scrimmage all the way to the outside. That is impressive. This young man has a. Uh, you know, a knack for getting off blocks and reading where the play goes and still fighting here in the fourth quarter. Hickson is a sophomore that uh, just had a sensational high school career in McKinney, Texas, there in the Dallas suburbs. And just three games last year he got to hear him. It's playing time here tonight. Jones on the reception on the second and nine. Picked up a few. Brandon tackled by Chris Hurd on the play near the 27-yard line of the Mean Green. Is he going to be one of the go-to guys now, Bill? Brady wants to cut a lot of balls tonight. Well, Mark Clayton is the guy coming in that you would expect as he had 26 receptions last year, and five touchdowns. But I'll tell you what, there's just a host of receivers that are available for this bunch. Third down and five, and again, it is Jones, and he dies for the first down near the 21-yard line. Paul Thompson picking up where White left off as far as working with number 81, Brandon Jones. Good looking receiver, good physical tools, 6'3, 208 pounds. Young man runs good routes, got good speed down the field. Execution here, quarterback just zips it out there to him and makes a nice grab, gets the first down. Looks easy pitch and catch, but uh, you, know, you got to get some respect. You push off a little bit, use your speed, and that's how you get those, uh, those plays late in the ball game. Fake to Hicks, and Thompson now going to keep the football, and he stepped those up down the sideline and looked like he was going to go out. He balances his way all the way inside the 10 yard line. Talk about his footwork, Bill. That's exactly what he shows here. You know, he shows them going to pass the ball, gets the defense to sit on their heels, and then turns the Jets on. He'd get around the corner and gets himself 9, 10 yards. For him. Just about a minute, does get the first down. Thompson took off the red shirt on him last year against UTEP. And well, you see the skill. Leander, Texas, not far from Austin. Goes to the border here, trying to star for Oklahoma now. And it is first and goal to go from the seven. Thompson, plenty of time, and drops it wide open. Touchdown, Rankins. His second of the night, and the Sooners make it 36 to 3. Well, they 
they tell players to be patient here. They'll get your opportunity. When you do, you need to perform. Thompson said yes, sir, with that drive, didn't he? He sure did. Came in there and executed very well. Threw the ball smoothly. Used his feet a little bit. Reads the defense here. Zone coverage. Trying to get back in zone and just threads the needle. There's no depth back there. There's no one in the back of the end zone. And safety was out of alignment there. Good job that time ex Oklahoma executing. And Oklahoma go for the point after here with DeCarlo, who's already had three field goals tonight to go along with his extra point work. And try to make it 37 to three. And he does. 37 is the magic number in this series. The last time they played was 01. It was 37 to 10. There's more on that coming up. Oklahoma 37 3 tonight. Welcome back to the Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium where Paul Thompson's just hooked up with Rankins for a TD reception. Rankins second score of the night and Oklahoma 37 to 3 lead over the mean green of UNT from Denton, Texas. Buzzy takes it. 25, lost the football. And it was recovered though by North Texas. Claiborne fell on it. North Texas will get it when we come back here in the fourth quarter in Norman. Two to go. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, John Radigan with you as the Sooners cruising here in the season opener. The nation's number one ranked team. Very impressive indeed. North Texas coming on now with a first and ten. The ball in its own 23 yard line as Bob Stoops starting his fifth year here at Oklahoma. Got to be pleased with what he's seen from his bunch as uh, asked about all the attention. He said, Our team handles it well. They know what to expect. We expect them to go out and focus and take care of business. Well, they certainly have done that here tonight. Texas keep it on the ground and Bishop the carry here brings it to the 29 yard line for the Eagles. Now you talk about coaches and how well they prepare their football teams. And Bob Stoops is, is, is one that uh, you got to learn how to win. You have to know how to win. That's a kind of a confidence and a thing that you expect when you go out on the football field that you expect to win. But you know what it takes to sacrifice to go out there and do it time in and time out. Bob Stoops, they've won a lot of football games with him here under, under his era and, and 11 wins a season ago. Big Rose Bowl finish for the season. Second and four, and Bishop has the first down near the 40-yard line. And let's go down to John Radigan. Uh, All more. right, Bill, yeah, thank you very much. You know, Daryl Dickey is no stranger to this place. In fact, his dad was the defensive backfield coach when Barry Switzer was here. Daryl tells a funny story before the game about how one time Barry Switzer got mad at him because Daryl was babysitting Barry's kids. Barry comes home, the kids are in the front yard naked. Daryl Dickey spraying them with a water hose. So they still talk about that to this day. And I heard you guys talking about me being the sweets the whole night. Look at these shoes now. Oh. I have, you know, I've worked, yeah, I've worked a little bit down here in the mud, too. You see there, I just want that evidence right there on, on camera. Probably got slippers upstairs. Yeah, I just wanted that sweets. evidence on camera, guys, because, you know, I worked it a little bit. Yeah. yeah I am smart, up. though. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you are. You, you escaped most of the weather most of the night. Yeah. <laughs> Branch on the play here for North Texas. As Mean Green trying to get a drive going. It'll be second down and nine. Daryl Dickey's done a nice job at North Texas. That 21 and 37 record is very misleading with a program that returned to Division I in the mid 90s after a brief stay in one double. And again, on the ground, out across the 50 yard line. Dr. Pepper game break. Let's go to Mike Goldberg in the studio. Bill, thank you very much. First full Saturday of the college football season. Kellen, your reflections. My reflections go to Nebraska. Big win for Frank Solich. The defense played well. That's a big win for them against Oklahoma State. How about the USC Trojans going down to Auburn, beating them 23 zip. Pete Carroll, superstar status. It is all about defense today. Bill and Gary, you're seeing a pretty good defensive effort in our game in Norman. Now, Oklahoma's defense certainly answered the call here early tonight and set a tone for this one. It's first and 10 at the 48, and North Texas 
keep it on the ground here with a clock with 222 to go and Bishop doing some nice work for this guy coming uh, Bishop just a sophomore He's showing some things here. Allen makes the tackle. Well, this is a situation in a football game where both coaches are trying to establish depth. You realize that the outcome of the game is already decided. So, so get some guys into the game, get them some game experience. This is something you can't really do in practice. So you get a chance to get these guys on tape, evaluate them. They're all going to improve. You know, the, the thing about Daryl Dickey and his football team coming in here, were they the underdogs? Yes. They're going up against the number one team ranked in the country. The talent level is, is very, very high at the University of Oklahoma. But Daryl Dickey, the way he prepared his football team, there's a flag on this play. He said, you know, let's just control the things that we can control. We can control how we practice, how we prepare, how we do Five things the in the slam. game. False start on the offense, five-yard penalty, second down. And don't really worry about Oklahoma, although that's, that's something to worry about. But what, I'm, what I mean by that is take care of the things that you need to take care of. And, you know, there's things that they can't control. They can't control the elements, the 81,000 people that are here tonight for this football game. And you know, I think he's, he's got a good focus on his team and that's why they've won championships the last two years. When they get into their conference play in the Sun Belt Conference, they are very well prepared. And I think they match up very well with the teams in that league. Yeah, even though they're losing 37-33, they are a very well coached football team. Paul, coverage breaking down and just tucks it under. And that in some ways is an example. Nothing's open. Don't try to do something silly and give up a pick and let somebody run one back. Make what you can out of it. Eat the football and take the next play. Well, Scott Hall does the right thing. You're exactly right, Bill. Don't throw it down there where you're going to get a ball picked or in trouble. Make something happen. Or, hey, tuck it down and run. There's nothing wrong with that as a quarterback. You just hope you don't take too many shots that way. And uh, this offense, they're trying to get something going here. Hey, if they can put something on the board here late in the game, they'll take it. UNT's offense last year just averaged 19 points a game. Their game plan is they let their defense win games from the offense. Go out and execute. Don't make a lot of silly mistakes. They run the ball quite a bit. Let their defense dominate and turn the ball back over to them in good field position, and they'll win most of those battles. And they went through the Sun Belt unbeaten last year. Yeah, they, they're a confident football team when they get into conference. They, they match up real well with those teams. Well, they got Baylor coming up next week. You know, that's, that's something that, you know, they're... They're going to be fired up to play that football game because I think that's one they, they may have a chance to, to compete oh, pretty well against that Baylor control. football team. Baylor, by the way, losing tonight a final to UAB. Alabama Birmingham gets him in Waco 24 to 19. So a tough start for Guy Morris, the new head coach. Ball incomplete intended for Branch. I think old Branch is just wore out. On the other side of the football, our player of the game tonight is the quarterback, Jason White, who after back-to-back -back years of year-ending knee injuries comes back 23 of 35 Gary for 248 yards and three scores and uh, looked like he'd been playing the whole time well all the critics you know, everyone all, all the questions are answered now Jason White is the quarterback he did well throwing the ball well knocked any rust or any questions off you know his legs are there you know, took a couple shots tonight you know yeah. he, he, you know took a few shots low low hits and he popped back up and I think more than anything, all the questions that were people were asking, he had some questions between those ears that, of himself and say, hey, am I prepared to do this? And I think he feels real good about how well he performed, and, and he showed himself, most importantly, that he's ready to play. First and 10 at the 44 for Oklahoma, Dante Hickson, and that will do it as Hickson stayed in bounds and ends the football game, and the nation's number one ranked team won't lose any votes after their dominating performance of the defending Sun Belt champions, North Texas, tonight. As Oklahoma 37, the Mean Green of North Texas 3. And Daryl Dickey congratulates Bob Stoops. Well, Bill, oddly enough, this is three times now that Daryl Dickey has come to Oklahoma. And all three times, 37 points have been rung up on the board against their football team. That's kind of the limit they give up. That's, that's uh, not what he'd like to have happen coming in here, but Bob Stoops and his, and his troops, they, they got a quality win. They got a good start off. And, both these teams are just going to march on down the road, one looking to do well in the Sun Belt Conference, the other obviously in the Big 12. So uh, I think two very well-coached football teams overall. Sooners got everything but the shutout. 